coach Brian Hill, 72 and 53 across his 14 seasons as head coach of the Buffalo, knows how much football means to this region. If you walked down Main Street this week, you saw the Buffs pride flags alongside the Garden City Community College flags. Of course, Garden City's also gotten off to a win. The Bronkbusters are one now. The Buffs are trying to do the same. Well, we're going to keep things going on the American Emblem Free Game Show. We'll come back in a moment, and we will hear from both head coaches tonight, Buffalo's head coach Brian Hill and Falcons head coach Dominic Dingle. That's all coming up in a moment here on KWKR 99.9 The Rock. Where's the beef? Where's Sorry, the pork? It's all at Ershman's Packing and Flax Barbecue in Garden City. Football season is here, and Ershman's has you covered with steaks, burgers, and hot dogs. Whatever you need for your barbecue. Don't want to do the cooking? Stop by Flax Barbecue for racks of ribs, family pack shredded pork or beef sausage, and so much more. Ershman's Packing and Flax Barbecue. The place to go for custom butchering, cookouts, or just planning your next meal. Call 620-276-3791 or stop by 912 East Fulton in Garden City. Proudly supporting the Garden City Buffaloes and area schools. Over time, all water wells lose production from plugging by slime, biofilm, mineral incrustations, silts, and clay. All wells should be cleaned periodically. Hydro Resources has the latest equipment and chemicals for cleaning your well. Our high-pressure jetting tool will work loose those plugging materials. This is followed by bailing to remove the loosened material and chemical treatment to dissolve it. Call Hydro Resources to learn more about the benefits of cleaning your water well. Taco Shell via home invites you to try their wide variety of hamburger styles. Try their Hawaiian style, Diablo Burger Combo, the Chori Queso style, and so much more. Don't forget their savory tacos. And on Taco Tuesday, receive a free order of frijoles charros. Taco Shell via home. Open Monday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Friday and Saturday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. 1505 East Kansas Avenue. Or call ahead at 620-287-7332. Taco Shell via home. The only food truck in town with 100% barbecue style hamburger. Welcome back to the American Infinite Free Game Show here live from Height Stadium in Wichita. We're about 23 minutes away from kickoff of the 2023 high school football season between the Garden City High School Buffaloes and the Wichita Heights High School Falcons. Cal Friedman here back on the American Infinite Free Game Show. We are about to hear from 14th year head coach Brian Hill. But before we do that, let's talk about some of the departures from this team. Garden City loses their leader at quarterback in Caleb Weesey. Now, not only was he a quarterback that led the Buffaloes to a 6 2 season, he filled in and did a great job in the safety position as we talked about with Aaron Elam on Buffs Talk Live before this. Now, a big thing about the Buffaloes is their run game. And last season, they were absolutely dominant. Zach Young went for over 900 yards and 13 touchdowns. They also lose wide receiver Jerry Ortega, who was huge for the Buffaloes in their playoff run last season. He goes off to Garden City Community College. Filling in for him out wide will be Emilio Zunt and Donovan Tarrant. Zunt has had spare time as a wide receiver he didn't have a touchdown in the game over Ulysses last year in a 49-6 win that came in the homecoming game in the second quarter. This is someone who is a freak athlete, also the starting point guard for the Garden City High School Buffalo's basketball team. Also spends some time at baseball. Where's number five in every single sport? And he will be donning the number five tonight. Not only that, he will be donning one of the five captain's armbands for Garden City tonight. The captains that were voted on earlier this week include him and Ethan Allen, who is going to be a huge part of this team. Somebody who had eight had tackles eight in this win, in win last season. Garden City, Garden City beat the Falcons 36 to 26. Allen with Allen six with solo six tackles. Solo he had 33 had solo tackles last, last season. season. Couple pass breaks, couple, couple fumble recoveries. Also had an interception in a game back over at Buffalo Stadium. Stadium. But when I talked to him earlier this week, he said he's most excited to play offense and he's going to play the side back position. Someone who hasn't had too many touches on offense, but when he has been practicing, he has looked absolutely phenomenal. And someone who has taken notice of that has been 14th year head coach Brian Hill. I got the chance to catch up earlier this week. Here, this pregame interview is brought to you by United Wireless. United Wireless proudly provides Southwest Kansas communities with the latest technologies and services to their customers. Find out why United Wireless is the best value with the best customer service. Now, here's Buffalo's 14th year head coach, Brian Hill. We're now joined by Buff's 14th year head coach, Brian Hill. American in the pregame show. Coach, we finally made it. Game day here for Garden City. Before I go too far into this game, on Main Street this week, they got the flags hung up for the college where you coached and, of course, the high school. Can you talk about how much football means to this town? Well, I mean, it really is something. Do that you have the uh, pregame interview or no? This has been, you know, a community pride type of thing, that both at the junior college and the high school level. And, you know, when football kicks off, you know, it's beginning of the new school year, you know, fresh start. And, 
and it's got everybody excited and, and that's a great thing and um, you know I think that's one of the cool things about being the head coach at Garden City High School is the amount of community support and and the way that they believe in their kids and you know to be a one horse town you know at a class 6a school uh, you just there's not very many of us you know in the state of Kansas that are like that most of them are um, attached to big cities and there's a lot of things to do and people don't necessarily always pay that close of attention if they don't have anybody playing um, at the high school that you know they go and do other things they go to concerts you know they go to movies they go out to restaurants and things and and you know that being an isolated you know community and things that um, there's not necessarily as many things to do that I think that it gives an opportunity for them that you know we still get parents and and many people that haven't had kids go to Garden City High School and play sports in 10, 15 years that are still coming to the games. And, and I think that that's really cool. It's really cool for our kids. And, um, you know, I know that they really enjoy it and, and it's something that they take a lot of pride in. First game of the season can kind of be that Christmas morning type of feeling. How are you feeling going into week one? Oh, I'm just excited. You know, I mean, this is, I guess, I, you know, people always ask me how long you're going to do this. And I think that, uh, the day that I wake up when I'm not excited about this opportunity or the first day of practice, you know, those are going to be obviously the times to step away. But, you know, it, it's something that I look forward to just as much as the kids do. So you mentioned on the coaches show on Monday that each year in this flex bone offense, the team's grown more and more comfortable. Now in year three of that system, quarterback is freshman when this is implemented. A lot of these guys are growing into this system as you've been integrating it. How do you feel they've handled the responsibility throughout camp? Oh, great. You know, I mean, they've, they've done a great job. We've, we've thrown a lot of things at them that, you know, normally in the last couple of years were mid-season before we threw at them. But, you know, they're comfortable. They, you know, we're trying to challenge their minds as much as we do physically at, at practice. And, you know, to be able to do that and understand uh, the certain, you know, crazy things that teams can do to flex bone teams, you know, when you do, you know, when we watch film, a lot of times it's not always what we see on film, <coughs> excuse me, is what we're going to see come Friday night because, you know, most of the time they're playing a different style of offense. And so, you know, defensive coordinators, you know, there's a lot of things out there on the internet, um, at clinics that you go to, how to try to stop this flex bone. And, you know, they're very non-traditional compared to some of the defenses that you see. So there's things that we've got to do every week in practice to keep our kids' minds sharp so that they understand when the rules are being challenged where they need to go so that we can continue to execute and run the plays that we run. How much confidence does that give you as a coach? Not just that your players are executing the plays on the field, but also executing, you know, above the shoulders mentally. Well, it's 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 everything, you know. I mean, you know, when you get out there in the game and and you know things are not necessarily going the way that you want to, or you know, when you can communicate on the same level, um, that's you know it was always the tough thing. You know, three years ago when we first implemented it, you know, we're playing Manhattan High School, and you know we're trying to you know communicate with kids on the field. And it's just not, you know, they don't have a visualization of what the way to play or what their rule is supposed to look like. And so the only way to try to fix it then is we got to get off the field, come over under the tent, put it on the television, watch some video, and then still it doesn't always necessarily register at that time. But, but now we can, you know, we're, we speak the same language. You know, we can, you know, communicate while kids are in the huddle, um, and they can make that adjustment now, you know, between plays, which is, you know, when you can do that, um, you know, you got an opportunity to be really good. So you guys got your first action last week in the Jamboree, actually playing against Wichita Heights. What were some of the things that you noticed from the Falcons? Uh, very similar to the things that they did a year, a year ago to us. Um, you know, they're, they're going to be a very blitz-heavy team. They, you know, they're going to bring a lot of inside pressure. Um, they're very athletic in the skilled positions. And so, you know, they're, they're going to try to put a lot of pressure on us to have to make blocks and make plays. And and I think that, you know, it, they got us a couple times uh, early in the, you know, in the jamboree. But, you know, our kids made some really quick adjustments, as I alluded to. And, and then from there, I thought that they really did a good job of picking them up. And, you know, we're not going to be perfect. The kids are not going to do everything right. They're, sometimes it's going to be physical. Um, they don't take the right step. You know, those are things that we have continued to harp on. But I think, you know, for the most part, I was really proud of the way that we, you know, kind of controlled the ball, controlled the you know the things that we did after um, some couple early mistakes that we made that you know after that I think we really settled down and and you know did 
and kind of perform the way we expected going into the jamboree. How important is that, just seeing that in preseason, that you guys are willing to control the controllables, especially going into week one where, you know, it's going to be first Friday Night Lights, a lot of pressure right. on these guys. But how important is it for you to see that these guys are doing the little things first? Right. I mean, that's, you know, we harp on, you know, doing little things and controlling the controllables all the time because those are those are the only thing that you can worry about. We can't control them. We can't control the weather. We can't control the officials. You know, we can't control a lot of things, but we can't control, you know, how we how we execute the game plan, how we, you know, control our emotions. And, you know, going into week one, you know, really, that's kind of more of my job than anything is, is to try to, you know, keep kids from getting too excited. Um, where that they do lose focus on what the little things are because that's usually the first thing when you're a little starstruck or things are moving a little bit too quickly because it's your first varsity experience that it usually comes from or what it leads to is you kind of forgetting the things that you've been taught and just you know kind of you know, almost kind of sleepwalking in a way that you know causes you not to do your job and that's you know that those things you know again i think happened um a little bit at the jamboree early that's kind of what it was but as soon as the kids settled down you know again the, i thought they did a really good job i'm sure after these last two seasons i wish or excuse me you wish that you could control the weather based on these last <laughs> couple of years so last year 36 26 win over heights you mentioned on monday it was a little awkward facing off with a former assistant for the first time but you also mentioned that there's not a better man to find than Dominic Dingle. Can you elaborate on what you meant by that? Well, Coach Dingle is, you know, I've known him since he was 18 years old and and uh, seeing him grow up as a, as a young man and a husband and a father, um, you know, and, and, and a mentor of young men. I mean, there's, you're not going to find a better guy. You know, that's, you know, when they called and, and wanted to do a background check and everything and he applied for the Heights job, I told them the exact same thing. And, and I said, if you don't hire him, you know, you, it, you, you'll regret it because he'll be a head coach somewhere and you'll wish you had, done, had when you had the opportunity, you would have taken him up on it. And, and um, <clears throat> you know, it wasn't that I wanted to lose him, but, you know, when, you know, guys come into my program as an assistant and, and they have aspirations of being a head coach that, you know, I told them that I will always be their biggest fan and I will do whatever I need to do to, to talk to people and, you know, try to get them the job that they are looking for. And, and everything and you know he he's just he's just such a good you know football mind i mean he you know there were times i had to tell him to go home um he would want to sit around here and we would you know on the whiteboard or talk football or be watching film and things and and he's got young kids at home and i told him i said you know the sun will come up tomorrow dominic let's go home and we can talk about more about this tomorrow so you know he's just he's just such a super guy i mean let alone being a good football coach is you know who he is and and his religious background and what he does for young men of, of teaching them to be you know great young men first before they, he ever talks about being a football player i think is is what makes him so great so you'd have to drag him out of this high school just to go home so oh, yeah there were times you know i mean him and the boys his boys and things would be around here and and uh yeah, I mean, he, he would just be, you know, there was never a task too big for him, and, and he would take on some that weren't even his that he knew needed to get done after, you know, he'd been around me for a while, and, and yeah, I mean, he's just a guy that is a you know, hard worker, he understands a job that needs to get done, and, and um, yeah, there were some times that we both probably said to tell one another, it's time to go home. So last question, first game of the season, first game for Ethan Gomez under center, who replaces Caleb Lee, who graduated last year. What do you tell the team in the locker room before the game, just to make sure that the lights aren't too bright, they can control what they need to, to hopefully get away from the one? Well, you know, the nice thing about going back to the place that was at the Jamboree is, is that, and it's only seven days apart, that yeah. you know, hopefully we can rely on our memory of what happened and, and they can apply that, you know, whatever made them a little, you know, dazed and confused early on and, and we didn't execute, that now we can hone in and focus and, and get get control of, you know, those mistakes early and not have them happen so that, so that we can go out there and play and, you know, the hardest thing in week one is not to beat yourself, you know, with penalties and turnovers and, you know, mental errors. Those are the things that we're going to be harping on. I have for 14 years that, that that's week one. And, you know, the team that usually takes care of those three things in week one are going to be the team that's got the best chance to win. And, and those are all things that we can control, you know, not not reaching and grabbing for face masks and not hitting anybody after the whistle, not jumping offside, 
um, you know, just just do your job. And I think that the hard thing is that, you know, sure trying to there. get kids to, you know, relax and not, you know, it's just another day of practice. You know, I mean, yes, the lights are on and there's going to be hundreds or maybe a thousand people there. You know, hey, we just need to we need to control those things, get out there, do what we do and and let the let everything else from there happen. Coach, thank you for your time. Best of luck tonight. You got it. Thank you. Here at American Implement, we're proud to be part of the communities we serve. And that's the reason we support local youth through scholastic activities like FFA, 4-H, band, and sports. We firmly believe that the right activity can bring out the best qualities every child has to offer. And we wholeheartedly want to support and be involved with that. It's part of our responsibility as a good neighbor. And we're proud to call your community our home also. Have you visited the Crepe House? You should. It's located at Five Points in Garden City with delicious gourmet crepes, Italian, Mexican, and Hawaiian style. Or maybe a refreshing fruit smoothie. Don't forget, they have Cuban food options as well. Who the delights the Crepe House invites you. they deal with residential farm land ag and commercial plus they can help sell and find a home the agency 118 east chestnut in garden city and 122 north main in lincoln say hola espanol Welcome back to Hunt Stadium, about 10 minutes north of downtown Wichita, the site of the opener for the 2023 high school football season for the Garden City Buffaloes as they take on the Wichita Heights Falcons. Cal Friedman here, welcome back into the American Implant pregame show brought to you by American Implant, your John Deere dealer serving all of Western Kansas. Shifting over to the Wichita Heights side of the ball, this is a team that's going through a little more transition than they might have expected going into the offseason. Head coach Dominic Dinkle enters the sixth season here at Heights after he came over. He's a Garden City guy and Hardy played for the Rockbusters for four years under current Buffalo's head coach Brian Hill. He also spent time as a head coach, or excuse me, as an assistant coach under Coach Hill from 2008 to 2017 over at Garden City High School. This is a Falcon team that has been pretty pedestrian since Dingle has taken over. They are 21-22-1 across six seasons. They're looking for their first winning season since 2021 when they managed a 5-3-1 and one record. Now, looking at the offense for Wichita Heights, they lose two of their best players. Firstly, the son of Dominic Dingle, DJ Dingle, the quarterback who torched Garden City for two touchdowns last season in what was a 36-26 win for the Buffs over in Garden City. He departs for nearby Friends University. He was playing in his first game about 10 minutes from where we are right now. It's been a busy week for Dominic Dingle. He's had some media availabilities, not only with me, but with some of the television crew that's crew televising that's this game nationally, nationally for Cox. He's also been in and out around a house that has four siblings, and he is now ready to start his seventh season as Falcons head coach. Now, offensively, this is a team that's been in a spread offense for the last couple of seasons. We mentioned Dinkle, but they had a one-back set because they had a four-star running back last season in John Randall, who had over 160 yards in this game last season what was a losing effort for the Falcons. He departs for Utah, and they have a couple of playmakers, playmakers within this team in Jamison Holland, who played on the defensive side of the ball last season, and Lucas and Meyer, two guys who haven't seen too many steps on offense, but have gotten plenty of time in this Falcons team. They move they over Tavian Johnson from wide receiver to quarterback. He will get the start tonight. When I asked Dingle about him earlier in the week, he said he brings a level of experience. He knows what the running backs are with spacing. He understands what the wide receivers are with spacing. He won the quarterback battle in seemingly a day and a half. It was him lined up against one of the other team captains in Avante Scales. He's going to start, get the start, excuse me, at the safety position. Johnson, last season, 186 yards on eight receptions, had three touchdowns, including one in this game last year. He had two 
three catches for 19 yards and a touchdown in that 36 to 26 loss out in Garden last season. He had 12 yard catch and a seven yard catch and he moves over from wide receiver to quarterback. And he's gonna be playing with a very mixed effort of skill positions on the offensive side of the ball. When I talked to Dominic Dinkle earlier in the week, he said that in terms of high end talent, they don't have the players that they had last season. That being said, this is a team that's gonna feature potentially 23 to 27 seniors that are gonna play. This is a very deep Wichita Heights team that's gonna be experimenting a lot, especially at the wide receiver position. Officially, they give the start to two sophomores in Camarion Bondi and Cornelius Gilkey. Gilkey's a very interesting one. This is his first ever high school games, not just at the varsity level, not just at the JV level. He didn't play freshman ball last year. This is a player who stands out on the basketball court, stands in at six foot, 165. They're gonna give him some jump balls tonight if Johnson can get the ball there. So we're gonna see Cornelius Gilkey, number, number, number 19 in red, potentially make some plays tonight. Wichita Heights is lined up all the way out at the schoolyard. They're they're starting to walk towards the stadium right now in their red uniforms with black lettering, black pants, and black helmets for the Falcons tonight, who are trying to get off to a much better start to this game than they did last season. I was just talking about four. That game last year took two and a half hours in a weather delay. It was a scary storm. Everyone who I've talked to that was at that Garden City game last season, including Aaron Elam, who got us started at 5.30 here on KWKR 99.9. Again, thank you so much, Aaron, for that. And we are so excited to have the rest of the season with you. Now, big time key tonight for the Buffs is gonna have to be to shutting down that passing offense because, as you mentioned, we haven't seen too much of it. We're gonna take a short break. Be right back here on the American in the pregame show. Take it to our Zate Auto Repair, and they'll make your sweet ride sound like this. They offer all general mechanical services, computer diagnostic, tire brake and suspension service, plus the best prices and excellent service you can trust at our Zate Auto Repair, 207 North Campus Drive in Garden City. Hey, give them a call, 620-277-7789. Time Out Restaurant wants to help ease the pressure of rising costs by offering you 10% off their breakfast menu from 7 a.m. till 9 a.m. Wednesday through Friday. How about a quick lunch? Stop and choose from an assortment of delicious entrees, fresh sides, and cold salads at their lunch buffet. Time Out is closed on Monday and Tuesdays. But don't forget, karaoke every Wednesday night and Thursday night trivia with cash prizes starting at 6.30. Take Time Out for yourself at Time Out Restaurant and Bar, 1319 Taylor Avenue, Garden City, where there's always something cooking. Your smile is everything, and that's something Dr. Jake Jewell takes very seriously. With his 25 years plus experience, he's devoted to restoring and enhancing the natural beauty of your smile using conservative, state-of-the-art procedures that will result in a beautiful, long-lasting smile. If you have questions or to schedule your appointment, give Dr. Jake Jewell a call at 620-260-2183 and their new location in Garden City at 2045 East Labrador Boulevard. Welcome back to Heights Stadium. We are right awaiting football two minutes away from the start of high school football here in Kansas. It's last season seven and three Garden City Buffaloes and last season's four and five Wichita Heights Falcons. Cal Freeman here on the American Emblem pregame show. The Buffs are getting ready to take the field in their all white uniforms with brown numbering and brown helmets with the numbers on the right side of the helmet and the Garden City Buffalo on the left side as the fans over from Garden City on the far sideline have come in spirit. It's a very big stadium here at Heights Stadium but the, the Buffs fans have made the trip of over three hours trying to cheer on their Buffaloes to a 1-0 start to the season. With kickoff coming momentarily, let's bring you tonight's keys to the game. They're brought to you by Wheatland Electric, delivering energy for life, a touchstone energy cooperative. That's Wheatland Electric. Starting our one side of the ball for Garden City, it's going to have to be on the wide receivers to create separation tonight. This is a Wichita Heights unit that returns five seniors at the secondary positions in their 3-3-5 defense. It's going to be Jamin Williams, Jeremiah 
Ty Yehuda and Ashmar Anderson starting as the three cornerbacks today with Captain Avante Scales and three of us. Remember Michael Smith manning the safety's position. So it's going to be very hard for Garden City to create any separation on offense for Ethan Gomez, who makes his first start under center. We heard from Brian Hill earlier today on the United Wireless pregame interview. He said the big key for this team was going to have to be to control the controllables, and that's what I'm going to look for for Garden City on offense. This is a team that we mentioned before has a lot of experience across this offensive line. When you look at Ethan Millen's on the left, a junior, Adrian Hernandez, another junior, one of the top guards in the state, Andrew Moreno, Sebastian Lopez, and Alonzo Guevara from center, right guard, and right tackle, respectively, all seniors. So this is a team, if they're able to avoid penalties and not shoot themselves in the foot, this is a Bucs team that has the talent to take down Wichita Heights tonight. These are two teams that met, actually, last week at this very stadium in the Wichita Jamboree. Three teams came over and kind of scrimmaged against each other. The Buffs did very well. Brian Hill was very impressed with how his team played. But now, that's all talk. It's game time in a couple of minutes. We're going to step aside, and we have football in about three and a half minutes here from Heights Stadium. It's the Falcons. It's the Buffaloes. It's coming up on KWKR 99.9 The Rock. Get up to 50% off select furniture. No credit needed with 0% interest. Upgrade your home with stylish furniture at unbeatable prices. Explore their huge selection at incredible savings, but don't wait. Plus, immediate delivery on selected items. Gallery of Furniture, 1010 South Kansas Avenue at Southgate Mall in Liberal. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Hot deals happening now at Gallery of Furniture. Friday night lights from Wichita. We are moments away from kickoff at Heights Stadium between the Garden City High School Buffaloes and the Wichita Heights High School Falcons. Cal Friedman here. We're about to wrap up here on the American Implement pregame show. Thank you so much to American Implement for sponsoring us. Your John Deere dealership serving all of Western Kansas. Looks like the Falcons have won the coin toss, and they are going to defer to the second half. So the Buffaloes are going to get the ball first tonight, going up from right to left across your radio dial. The stadium here at Wichita Heights, the Heights logo on the left end zone facing west, and the Wichita end zone facing east. So it'll be the Buffaloes attacking from right to left, going towards the Heights end zone, and Wichita Heights attacking the Wichita end zone, going from left to right, headed east across your radio dial. This is the seventh all-time meeting between Garden City and Wichita Heights. Of course, Garden City won last season 36 to 26 in a crazy game. They won here two years ago on this very day. And now the opportunity for the Buffaloes to try and go to 5-2 and two all time against Wichita Heights. So we are just about ready for football. Wichita Heights will kick off going from left to right in their red uniform with black lettering and heights printed across the front. Black pants and black helmets for the Falcons, whose logo exactly mimics the Atlanta Falcons logo. The Buffaloes are in their snow trooper uniforms with white pants, white, uni white uniforms, excuse me, and white helmets with a brown stripe across the front. The player numbers are on the left side, and the Buffalo is on the right side. 
Kicking off tonight for Wichita Heights is going to be Kieran Harrison-Jones, who's going to split time at both kicker and defensive end for this Falcons team. The senior 5'11", 195. Last season against Garden City, he was punting. He had two punts for 78 yards and pinned one inside the 20. It's a rematch of head coach and assistant coach between Dominic Dinkle of Wichita Heights and Brian Hill of Garden City. We are moments away. Garden City will receive going from right to left across your radio and dial. Harrison Jones punts this one away. It's a short kick, and we're underway in the 2023 season. This kick is going to roll out of bounds on the far sideline at the 22-yard line, and the Buffaloes are going to get great field position to open up their season. That was something that Brian Hill mentioned on the pregame show. He wanted to control the controllables. This is a Wichita Heights team that really hurt themselves with penalties last season when these two met. And now Ethan Gomez will line up for the first time under center. A two-sport athlete who played baseball and basketball during the 2021 school year, played baseball last season, now steps in as the Garden City quarterback, replacing Caleb Weesey. He brings the team out in their traditional flex bone offense. One wide receiver split out to the near side is Braden Sneath. First down and 10 at the 35. Takes the snap, handoff goes straight up the middle to Wario Ruiz, who has room at the 45 and breaks up for a first down at the 47 yard line. Someone who had 290 yards, he was fourth on the Buffaloes in rushing last year. The junior's first carry of the season goes 12 yards and a first down for Garden City. You're going to see that happen a lot for Garden City, who had 930 rushing yards from their leading rusher last season. And after just one play, the Buffaloes are near midfield. This is a team that only threw the ball three times against Heights last season. We'll see how many times they throw it tonight. First down and 10. Handoff goes straight up the middle to Ruiz again. He's met up around the line of scrimmage. He's going to move his way towards midfield. So call it a gain of three here to open up the game. So already 15 yards for Ruiz. We're going to call it here. 11-18 if you're just joining us. First possession of the season for the Buffaloes. And they are scoreless at the moment. It'll be a second and seven coming up. We'll give you the starting lineups in a moment for Garden City, a team that loses their two wide receivers from last season in Jerry Ortega and Javier Arzate. Two wide receivers line up to the near side. It's Emilio Zunt and Sneath here. Second down and seven for the Buffaloes. Gomez takes the snap. It's an option. He picks it up to the far side to Ethan Allen, who uses the stiff arm, gets his way into Wichita Heights territory. He'll be spotted out around the 45-yard line, so it's going to set up a third down in very short. Starting lineup tonight for the Buffaloes, Zunt and Sneet at the wide receiver positions. The offensive line from left to right, McMillan, Hernandez, Moreno, Lopez, and Guevara. Allen and Ruiz are the two signbacks with Villalobos at running back. Tonight's starting lineups are brought to you by Lot Motors, who have experience satisfying their customer needs, bronze their inventory on their lot or online at lotmotors.net. It's going to be a third down and two here for the Buffaloes at the Wichita Hikes 45-yard line. Flexbone offense. Man in motion is Allen. The handoff goes straight up the middle to Ruiz, and he's met at the line of scrimmage, and he's not going to get it. I don't think that run went anywhere. He was stuffed in the middle by Joshua Ibdakun, and it'll be fourth down decision time here for Garden City on their opening possession. And it looks like Garden City is going to keep the offense on the field. This is a Garden City team who's replacing a couple different starters. The strength of this team is going to be in their offensive line, where they have three seniors and one of the top guards in the state in Adrian Hernandez. It's going to be a fourth down and two. 10-18 to go in the first quarter. Garden City at the Wichita Heights 45. They need the 43 to keep this drive alive. The snap to Gomez. The pitch to the right side for Allen. Cuts up the field. Has the first down and gets out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Second carry for Ethan Allen, and he picks up the first down for Garden City. Ethan Allen is someone who stood out at cornerback last season, actually had eight tackles in the win over Heights last season. But when I talked to him earlier this week, this is someone who's super excited to play on the offensive side of the ball. And already on two catches, two positive gains, and the Buffaloes keep the drive alive. They will have it at the 41 of Wichita Heights. This is a Falcons defense that's led by seven seniors across the starting lineup, including three captains, Devante Scales, Cale Millison, and Nate Campbell. First down and 10, the Buffaloes take the snap. It's a handoff to Ruiz, who has room. Mathis 35 to the 30. Ruiz still at the middle of the field, past the 25, and to about the 22-yard line. Big gainer for the junior, and the Buffaloes are moving it early. Call that one a gain of about 19 yards for the junior. Someone who's expected to be a very big part of this Buffaloes offense this season. And here come Garden City. Ruiz did not play in this game last season. Set line, Zach Young, excuse me who rushed for 930 yards. 9.19 to go in the first. The Buffaloes moving in on their opening possession of this bar for Garden City. I've got six runs so far for this offense. A team that is going to run the ball a lot. They only had three passes 
last season. They went for 67 yards. So now second down and very long. They're spotted at the 26. Pitch goes out to the near side for Ruiz, and the Falcons swarm him in the backfield. It was blown up right over the middle as Javen Martin, the senior defensive lineman, got in the backfield. It'll be a third down and very long. So a couple of backwards runs. We'll say that one's a loss of four. So the Buffaloes are going to need to get it to about the 13-yard line if they want to keep this drive moving. They're going to spot it at the 29-yard line as Gomez trots back in after getting the play call from Brian Hill. Gomez is someone who has very good connection with his wide receivers. He has not thrown the ball yet. We will see if the Buffaloes go to the air here. It's a third down and very long. Two wide receivers out to each side in the flex bone position. Gomez takes the snap, fakes the pitch, hands it off to the right side for Allen, gets around one tackle. He's through about the 25, moving towards the original line of scrimmage. He's pushed out of bounds about the 21-yard line. It'll be fourth down. So, so a positive possession for Garden City to open up this game. They go all runs. It'll be fourth down. It'll be decision to time for Garden City. It looks like they're going to go for it here on about fourth and 10. Of course, Garden City transitioning from kickers. Eddie Rodriguez is the official kicker. He is not going to get it. It's going to be fourth down, and we're going to say 10 with 7.45 to go in the first quarter. No score here on the Buffalo's opening possession of the season. Falcons have five men at the yard to gain the 13-yard line. Snap to Gomez. He's going to throw for the first time. Pressure in his face. Moves out to the right. Has the right sideline. Keeps it at the 20. The 15. He gets the first down and goes out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Big time run from Ethan Gomez. Escaped the pressure of a Falcon. Moved along the right sideline all by himself and sets up the Buffaloes with a first down opportunity. First time the quarterback has been called to make a play on the eighth play of the drive. They go to the pass. It wasn't there. And Gomez, a baseball player in the spring, uses some of that athleticism to pick up a first down. So they spot him down at the 11 yard line by the look of it. So first and 10, they can still get a first and goal without getting the touchdown. One wide receiver to the near side, snap to Gomez, hand off to Reese. He's got a hole at the five, into the end zone, touchdown. Garden City, Mario Ruiz, who had five touchdowns in his sophomore season, gets his first in his junior season on the opening possession. 7.34 to go in the first, it's Buffalo six and Falcons zero. A perfect nine play drive, which goes for six and 11 yard touchdown for Ruiz. And the Buffaloes take their first lead of the season. Now they go out for the field goal. It'll be the linebacker and kicker this season, Jesus Rodriguez. The holder looks to be Emilio Zunt. First opportunity for, for, excuse me, for Rodriguez, who had some kicking practice on Wednesday. Now this is his first opportunity for an extra point. Snap to Zunt, he gets it down, doesn't get it down, it's pressure in the backfield, he throws it out wide, it's caught by Finch, moving towards the goal line, he stopped. It was a high snap to Zunt, he couldn't get it down in time, his pressure came around the edge, he did a good job actually to fling it out to Finch, but he couldn't get to the end zone. But the Buffaloes still cash in on a nine play drive, which ends in six, with 7.34 to go in the first quarter, it's Buffalo six and Falcon zero, here on KWKR 99.9 The Rock. When was the last time your family had their best day ever? Come to Garden City, Kansas, where you can slide, splash, and play this summer. The all-new Garden Rapids at the Big Pool. Thrills and chills for the whole family. Parrot Cove Indoor Water Park, where there's something for everyone. No matter what the weather, we have you covered. Garden City, Kansas has the coolest spots under the sun. Make a splash. Great start to the season for Garden City. A nine play, 65 yard touchdown drive that takes about four and a half minutes and an 11 yard score up the middle by junior Mario Ruiz. The Buffaloes, who scored 36 against this Falcons defense last season, are on the board to start the 2023 season. 
Cal Friedman here for KWKR 99.9 The Rock. The Buffaloes unable to convert on the point after as it was a high snap to older Emilio Zunz. He actually did a very good job to fling it over to Evan Finch who caught it on the near sideline and was pushed out of bounds. Or excuse me, was down, excuse me, at around the one. So it is only six for the Buffaloes who will now kick off going from right to left across the radio. Now first time that we get to see the Falcons offense, a team that scored 26 in this game last season, scored as much as 63 in a game over Wichita North last season. But making plenty of transition, they lose two of their key playmakers. We'll talk about that in a moment as the Falcons offense will take the field after this kickoff by Jesus Rodriguez. We got his first opportunity to try and kick for Garden City on that point after. The snap was too high. He didn't have a chance to put it down. He'll have a chance to play middle linebacker where he was dominant last season. He had 80 tackles, seven tackles for loss, and two sacks as he alternated between edge and linebacker last season for Brian Hill's team. Buffalo's in all white, the Falcons in red jerseys and black pants. We kick off going from right to left. Falcons with one man deep. The kick goes away. It's a good one that goes all the way back to the five yard line. Fielded by Avante Scales, who moves into the middle of the field at the 20, has one man in front of him, and he's taken down at the 27 yard line. Emilio Zunt makes the play on special teams, and it's a good return here for one of the leaders on this Falcons team that has as many as 27 seniors that can make a chance to make a play this season. One of those seniors will be under center tonight. Tavian Johnson, who converts from wide receiver to quarterback after the graduation of DJ Dingle, who moves off to Friends University. Johnson, who had 186 yards last season at wide receiver, moves under center as the Falcons were trying a new offense tonight. They'll go to that triple option look that the Buffaloes used very well on their opening drive of the game. 6-0 Garden City here, 7:27 to go in the first quarter here at Heights Stadium. Johnson lines up under center, two wide receivers to the nearest side. He takes the snap. It's a handoff going straight up the middle and moving his way to about the 31-yard line there is Jamison Holland. He's one of the seniors who's mostly played as a defensive player, has 34 career tackles for the Falcons. It was a run that went right in the middle, so a decent first start for Wichita Heights. they spotted as a gain of five. The Falcons attempted 14 passes last season against the Buffaloes, and they went for over 150 yards, so they had some success doing it. But this is a team that's trying to be a lot deeper this season. Second down and five at the 31. It's a pitch out to the nearest sideline, looking for room, and wrapped up right at the line of scrimmage. It was a pitch to Zane Masterson and taken down by the Buffaloes at the line. So third down and long coming up for a Buffaloes defense that was stout last season, returns a couple of starters. And the Falcons, who are trying two straight run plays to open up the game, might have to go to the air here on third down and five. They have it at the 26 of Wichita Heights. They need to get to the 32-yard line to extend the opening series. One wide receiver out to each side, two slot backs out to each side. The running back in the backfield is Holland. Man goes in motion. It's an option going out to the left side. The Buffaloes are there to it. Swarmed in the backfield by Braden Zibble. The pitch went out to Lucas Meyer. He had nowhere to run. The safety makes the tackle. It'll be fourth down. They'll say a loss of six on the play past the original line of scrimmage, a three and out for the Falcons offense as they send the punt team out. You couldn't ask for a much starter, or excuse me, much better start for Garden City to open up this game, a touchdown drive that goes 65 yards, and now they're gonna get the ball in what likely will be very good field position. It's gonna be Nicholas Tingle Clown back deep to punt. Ethan Allen standing at the 50 yard line awaiting the kick as the clock winds to under six minutes to go in the first quarter. Garden City leading at six to nothing. Single Cloud gets the snap, receives it at the six, and sends this one away towards the near sideline. A wobbly kick that takes the Garden City bounce at the 36, rolling back out of bounds at the 31-yard line. And Garden City is going to get great field position after a great start by their defense. A drive that went just four plays for the Falcons, and they give the Buffaloes great field position already with a six to nothing lead. Going back to that first drive for Garden City, nine plays, 65 yards. They only attempted one passing play in a play where on fourth down, quarterback Ethan Gomez was absolutely swamped in the backfield. He did a great job to step up and run off to the far side for a gain of about 12, we'll call it, to set Garden City up with a first down and 10 at the 11. They would score on the next play by Mario Ruiz. They set up again here, 5.45 to go in the first quarter. Garden City ahead six to nothing. 
Handoff up the middle to Ruiz out of one tackle and then wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. That looked like Tinkle Cloud who just made the punt who takes him down along with Eric Ulrich. So second carry for Ruiz who carried the ball six times on that opening drive. That time he just had nowhere to go. Falcons defense that lines up in a 3-3-5 is what we were given on the depth chart with Javen Martin, Joshua Ibdekun, and Kieran Harrison Jones along the defensive front. Three senior linebackers for this team, including Nick Campbell, who had 100 tackles last season. Someone who stands out on both sides of the ball also appears on the offensive line with his brother, Jason. Second down and 10 for the Buffaloes at the 32-yard line, they'll say. Gomez to throw for the second time, and he's wrapped up in the backfield for a sack. It was a bootleg out to the right side. The Heights pressure got home. Kale Millicent with the sack. It'll be third down and long. They'll say a loss of four on the sack. One of the keys in the pregame show presented by Wheatland Electric was for Garden City to create separation against this experienced cornerback room. That time they just had absolutely no chance. It was great pressure around the edge by the Falcons who sent pressure and got home perfectly to Gomez. Under 4.30 to go in the first quarter. It's going to be a third down and 15 for Garden City at the 37 of Wichita Heights, controlling a 6 to nothing lead. Sneath, the lone wide receiver along the near side, zunt out to the far side. Allen goes in motion. Handoff goes straight up the middle to Ruiz, who gets through the center in the right gap for about three to four yards to set up fourth down and about 10. So Ruiz, who went backwards on the first carry, will say about five yards there. It's been a very strong start for the junior, though. So him some time to get into the team last season, broke out in a game against Wichita North, where he had 126 yards and three touchdowns. That'll be Garden City's home opener next week as they welcome in the Red Hawks at Buffalo Stadium, trying to come back to Garden City with a 1-0 record. They currently control a 6-0 lead, under four minutes to go in the first. It's like fourth down and nine. The Buffaloes are going to go for it at the 31. Moving along the line of scrimmage, but the flags stay in the pocket as it was Villalobos who went in motion to the near side. Gomez steps out. And it looks like the Buffalo is going to take their first time out of the game. A little miscommunication along the line. They don't get the Falcons to jump offside. We're going to take a 30-second break. Garden City leading at 6 to nothing here with 3.30 to go in the first on KWKR 99.9 The Rock. And the mission of the Casnetti Group is to make your insurance experience convenient, simple, and affordable. They would meet a welcoming staff and people that really care about them and want to you know, help them with their needs, whatever that might be. What is most satisfying about what I do is our clients. Bottom line, I love just watching our clients grow and get to be part of their life. Second possession of the game for the Buffaloes. They've had three plays so far. Two plays that go backwards and a five-yard run up the middle by Mario Ruiz. It's going to set up a fourth down and nine. Looks like the Buffaloes trying to draw Wichita Heights off sides, but no flags came in, and Brian Hill used his first timeout of the season. Cal Friedman here for the KWKR 99.9. The Rock, the Buffaloes ahead six to nothing. We'll give you the Buffaloes defensive starters that forced a three and out on that opening possession. Across the defensive line, it's Theo Hogan with Sebastian Lopez, David Hogan, and Zach Kitsch going from left to right. The linebackers, Braden Sneef. Eddie Rodriguez and Colden Blakenhorn. The cornerbacks are the seniors, Ethan Allen and Emilio Zunt. And the safeties, Braden Dibble and Evan Finch. The starters for tonight brought to you by Lot Motors. Browse their inventory or lot online at lotmotors.net. Waiting for this time out to come out. Of course, this is a televised game brought to you by Cox. And you can also tune in on the stream on the Southwest Kansas Sports Network. Thank you so much to Jared Powers and the crew for making the trip out here over three and a half hours from Garden City to Wichita. It's the longest road trip of the season for this Buffaloes team, and it opens up their 2023 campaign. If you're looking for Garden City Community College football, they also have their longest road trip of the season tomorrow at Dodger Stadium in Fort Dodge as they take on the Iowa Central Tritons in a top 10 matchup across Juco. We'll have all the action starting at 1130 here on KWKR 99.9 .9 The Rock. The Buffaloes retake the field here, 3.30 to go in the first. It's going to be fourth down and nine. The Buffaloes need the 22-yard line of Wichita Heights to keep this series alive. Allen goes in motion, pressure straight up the middle. Gomez looking to throw, a flag flies. He goes deep over the middle. There's contact. It misses everybody incomplete. There is a flag in the backfield. We'll see what it is. It looks like it might be a holding, and it might be a fourth down stop here for the Falcons. 
And it is a holding against Garden City. It'll be declined, and it will be a unsuccessful fourth down try for the Buffaloes, and they'll give Heights the ball back. Gomez went straight over the middle. He was looking for Emilio Zunt, who was blanketed between three Falcons defenders. He actually ran a pretty good streak route over the middle. Gomez couldn't get the throw on time as one of the safeties, it looked like Avante Scales, was in coverage for the Falcons. So second possession for the Buffaloes. They're unable to score on it after starting in very good field position. They go run, 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 pass, and Gomez's first official pass of the season goes to nobody. So the Falcons take over with 3.23 to go at their own 31-yard line. Flex bone set. One wide receiver out to each side here for Tavian Johnson, who receives the snap under center, hands it off straight up the middle to Millicent, and he gets to about the 34-yard line. Looks like Colden Plankenhorn, who's the only starting sophomore in this team for Garden City, who makes the stop. Plankenhorn, who was part of the varsity baseball team in his freshman season last year, making his varsity debut tonight. A couple players making the... Buffalo's debuts tonight for varsity, including Braden Devil, who had a big time tackle for loss on the first series. So now second down and eight for the Heights Falcons at their own 33 yard line. Same formation, one wide receiver to each side here with 249 and winding here in the first. So you read option, the pitch goes out to the right side and it looks like it's gonna be stopped in the backfield. The pitch went out to the talented Dennis Carter, the senior who converted from offense, or excuse me, to offense from defense. And it'll be third down and nine, they'll say, so a loss of two for the first try for Carter this season. Falcons have been unable to attempt the pass so far, a team that loses their starting quarterback from last season. Of course, both these teams transitioning from seniors in DJ Dingle for the Falcons and Caleb Weesey for the Buffaloes. It'll be third down and eight for the Falcons at their own 33-yard line, just over two minutes to go here in the first quarter. Sends a man in motion. Johnson, the handoff goes straight up the middle. Out of one tackle and wrapped up by Rodriguez at the 35-yard line. Nowhere to go for the Falcons. They got some yards out of it. It's going to be fourth down and long in decision time again for Dominic Dinkle. Trying to avoid a second straight three and out. As Jesus Rodriguez makes his first tackle of the game. Someone who had 10 tackles against Heights last season. And a touchdown on a fumble recovery. And it looks like Heights will send out their punter again. So two straight three and outs. As the Falcons go with three straight runs, they don't do anything with them. So a sigh of relief for the Buffaloes after they weren't able to convert on good field position. Allen back to return at about the 40 yard line of Garden City. And it'll be Tinkle Cloud back to punt again. Waits the snap, gets the snap with one second on the play clock, sends this one away, it's a good punt. Moving Allen back, he's gonna call fair catch. It takes a bounce and will be down by Wichita Heights at about the 31 yard line. That was a great punt by Tinkle Cloud, a booming kick who shakes off a rough first punt to pin the Buffaloes back deep in their own territory. So they will start at 31-yard line for their third drive of the game. Buffalo's first drive went nine plays, 65 yards. They got a great start after the opening kickoff bounced out of bounds on the far sideline. They marched down the field, Mario Ruiz, an 11-yard touchdown. The difference so far in this game, with 104 to go in the first quarter, Garden City leading at six to nothing. So far, Ethan Gomez 0 for 1 through the air, but he does have 12 yards on the ground on a crucial fourth down conversion, which set up the Buffalo's touchdown. They come out in a very bunched formation. Zunt and Steve are the wide receivers, but they're not more than five yards from the center. Man in motion is via Lobos. The snap goes up the middle to Ruiz, bouncing off one tackle, stuck in the backfield out of another Falcon, and then taken down at the 30 yard line. He was absolutely swarmed by this Wichita Heights defense. He tried to go up the middle, bounced out to the far sideline, and wound up losing one. So the ninth carry already for Ruiz. He's going to be the bell cow in this offense. He's super excited after learning from Zach Youngsafet last season, who had 930 yards and north of 15 touchdowns for Garden City as they went 7-3 and three last season. It'll be second down and 11 for Garden City, standing at their own 30-yard line, under a minute to play, clock winding under 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. Two wide receivers to the near side. The snap is taken, the pitch to Villalobos along the right side, out of one tackle, gets to the 35, moves up towards the 40-yard line where he is bullied out of bounds. A big-time hit laid out by Avante Scales, one of the captains. And it'll be third down and very short, we'll say a gain of 10 for Villalobos on his first carry of the season. Someone who got some spare time last season, had 107 yards on offense, 
had a career by 64 yards and a win over in this same city, Wichita against North last season. 12 seconds, the clock is stopped after the play went out of bounds. It's a third down and one at the 40 yard line. Garden City needs their own 42 to keep this drive alive. Very tight formation for Garden City. Man in motion, Allen, handoff up the middle to Ruiz. He'll get the first down, moving his way forward to the 48 yard line. And another first down for the Buffaloes. They all needed one, it looks like they got about eight. The clock currently stopped with seven seconds as the clock moves up. And that will bring us to the end of the first quarter. Garden City starts strong on the 11-yard touchdown by Ruiz. They'll have the bar near midfield as we go to the second. We've played one, three more to go. It's the Buffalo 6 and the Falcons 0 here on KWKR 99.9 The Rock. Integrity. Community focus. Accountability. Respect. And an entrepreneurial spirit. These are the qualities that make up a good bank. These are also the qualities that define Equity Bank. Equity Bank. We never forget it's your money. When your car's been in a collision, getting it repaired properly is critical for your family's safety and your peace of mind. Skeeter's Body Shop is the only body shop in Southwest Kansas to complete the rigorous training requirements to be Gold Class certified. Certified by Ford, GM, Dodge, Jeep, Honda, Nissan, Hyundai, and many others. And even certified for your new aluminum vehicle. So our repairs won't void your factory warranty. Choose to have your vehicle repaired by professionals. Choose Skeeter's Body Shop in Garden City. Beautiful sunset here, 10 minutes north of downtown Wichita on the night, getting ready for the start of the second quarter between Garden City and Wichita Heights. It's the Buffaloes with a 6 nothing lead off an 11-yard touchdown by Mario Ruiz. Cal Friedman here for KWKR 99.9 The Rock. You can also join this game on YouTube stream on the Southwest Kansas Sports Network run by Jared Powers and his team who have made the three-and-a-half-hour drive out here to Heights Stadium. Great crowd settling in here the opening night of the season. Here on the first night of September, Friday Night Lights. It's such a great feeling, and we're going to bring it back to you next week in Garden City as the Buffaloes open up their home season against Wichita North. Kickoff starts at 7 o'clock here on KWKR 99 The Rock. You can catch Aaron Elam with all the coverage on Buffs pregame live at 5.30. Great to have Aaron back, and of course, after this game, we will bring you the Southwest Kansas Roundup, which will bring you the scores around all of high school football as we get underway with another great season. So the Buffaloes, after a third down and one conversion, will open up at their own 48-yard line here, first down and 10. Two wide receivers on the field, one out to each side, are Sneet and Zunt. Ethan Gomez under center, still looking for his first completion. It's a pitch up to the right side, it's taken away, and the Falcons are gonna run this one back. It's Kale Millis into the house. Touchdown, Wichita Heights. Gomez tried to pitch it out to Allen, who was running along their side of the field. Millicent got straight in the backfield, tipped it, picked him up himself, and ran it back 48 yards. And the Falcons have tied the game on the opening play of the second quarter. 11.48 to go in the half. It's Wichita Heights 6 and Garden City 6. Out of absolutely nothing, the Falcons get life in this game. Nicholas Tinglecloud will be out to attempt the extra point and give the Falcons the lead. The touchdown scorer, Millicent's now going to trot back on the field and block for this kick. What a crazy start here this second quarter. In week one, you can see almost anything happen. And a Garden City team who had two defensive touchdowns last season in this game concedes one. The snap, the hold, the kick is on the way. It's short and no good. So both teams fail on their extra point attempts. We will step aside with 11.48 to go in the second quarter. Whole new ball game, Wichita Heights 6, Garden City 6, here on KWKR 99.9 The Rock.
looked like a great end to the first quarter for Garden City has turned into the start of a disastrous start to the second quarter. Wichita Heights, a 48-yard defensive touchdown by senior captain Kale Millicent. The point after was missed by kicker Nicholas Tinklecloud, so this game's tied at six as Wichita will kick it off going from right to left across your radio dial. The kick goes away towards Villalobos and Allen. Allen drops back towards the end zone, lets this one bounce in the end zone for a touchback. So two kickoffs have been very different for Tinkle Cloud tonight. One of them went out of bounds, setting up Garden City with great field position. The second one goes all the way back to the end zone. We also have another score update here. Another game going on in Wichita. Wichita West leads Dodge City 8-7 to seven on a two-yard touchdown run by Colby Eck Watkins with a two-point conversion, putting the Pioneers in front. If you're looking for Dodge City High School Red Demons, you can join Z98 with Mark McClure, or you can keep it here on KWKR 99 The Rock. Of course, Garden City won the Hatchet game last year, so we'd prefer that you keep it here. First down and 10 for the Buffaloes at their own 25-yard line. Trying to snap that last play out of their memory. First down and 10, Ethan Gomez takes the snap, hands it up the middle to Mario Ruiz, who gets to the line of scrimmage and nothing more, nothing less. So Mario Ruiz, who had 61 yards in a touchdown in that opening quarter, the only scoring of the game so far for the Buffaloes on an 11-yard touchdown run on their opening possession. We haven't even played a minute in this second quarter, and this game has been turned on its head by Wichita Heights. On that play that was meant to be a pinch to Ethan Allen, it was deflected and taken away by linebacker Cale Millison. Second down and 10 for Garden City at their own 25-yard line. Gomez under center, one wide receiver to each side. Villalobos in motion, the pitches to Villalobos running along the far sideline. Gets to the 25, past the 30, has room at the 35 to the 40, nearing midfield and taken out of bounds by Scales inside Wichita Heights territory. Biggest play of the game so far for the Buffaloes, it's Villalobos, the sophomore, who takes it to the 48-yard line. Switched his number from number 22 to number one in the offseason. And on his second carry, another huge chunk play for him. They'll say a gain of 27, so already 37 yards, give or take, for Villalobos tonight as they actually spawn him out at midfield. So 25-yard carry sets up the Buffaloes here. First and 10 at midfield in a tie ball game with 11 minutes to go in the first half. Gomez sends Villalobos in motion. He takes the snap, hands it off to Ruiz, who gets to the 47-yard line for a gain of three. That's already 12 carries for Mario Ruiz in this game. The Buffaloes have attempted just two passing, or excuse me, three passing plays in this game. One was a rush by Gomez that went for 12 yards. One was a sack that lost four yards, and then an incomplete pass on a fourth down and nine. So far, it's been a great effort from the Buffalo's defense. They forced two three and outs by the Falcons, but as mentioned, the Falcons getting on the board with a defensive touchdown. Second down and seven here for the Buffaloes at the 47-yard line. One wide receiver to the near side is Zunt. The wide receiver to the far is Steve. They fake the pitch right. They go left with Villalobos, who has room at the 40, has the first down, and moves his way inside the Wichita Heights 35-yard line, down at the 34. What a start to this game for the junior. Just his third carry, and he's nearing 50 yards already. He only had one carry in that first quarter. He went for 10 yards, and he has looked like a spark so far for this Garden City team. Calling again at 12, we'll say. So first down and 10 for Garden City. Moving it now, driving at the Wichita Heights 34-yard line. The wide receivers in Seath and Zunt are along the near sideline. Man in motion is Ruiz. They pitch it out to Allen along the right side. Stiff arm at one tackle, and he's wrapped up in the backfield at the 42, but flags fly immediately. Avante Scales read the play well. This could be a face mask against either team. We'll see what the, the officials say tonight. Pretty quiet first quarter in terms of penalties. Garden City haven't committed one, but that could change right here. Here comes the call. And it goes against the defense, a face mask against Scales. So what would have been a loss of probably six or seven is going to turn into a huge gain and move Garden City near the red zone. <laughs> Tough one to take for Dominic Dinkle's team. This was a team that was killed last season in this game by penalties. Took over 100 yards of penalties and lost that game by 10. They'll spot the 19, so Garden City's entered the Lewis Automotive Red Zone. Lewis Automotive, your automotive home for drivers in southwest Kansas. 
First down and 10 for Garden City at the 19 yard line of Wichita Heights in a 6-6 ball game here, 9.30 to go in the second quarter. Two wide receivers in the near side. Gomez takes the snap. It's a pitch out to Villalobos. Dropped it initially. Picks it up, keeps running, and goes out of bounds at the eight yard line. It was a low pitch by Gomez, fielded by Ruiz. They go out of bounds, so they'll say a gain of nine. At least that's what the side judges have. So it was dropped initially by Villalobos. He picked it back up and ran for about 11 yards. What a start to this game it has been for Villalobos. Now four straight runs for double-digit carries. And Garden City have it first and goal at the nine. Same position, two wide receivers to the near side for Ethan Gomez. Sends Villalobos in motion. Hand off to Ruiz, off of one tackle, and he'll get to about the seven-yard line. Just running straight at the heart of the Wichita Heights defense that looked like Javen Martin on the tackle. Martin, who has six tackles in his varsity career, has also forced a fumble. One of potentially 27 seniors that can make an impact for this Falcons team. When I talked to Dominic Dinkle, their head coach of six seasons, back on Wednesday. 8.50 to go in the first half. Tie ball game at six. The Buffaloes have it in the red zone for the second time today. Second and goal from the seven yard line. One wide receiver to the far sideline. Gomez sends Allen in motion. Hand off to Ruiz at the five and into the end zone. Another touchdown. It's Ruiz again, his second of the game. And the Buffaloes lead it 12 to six with an extra point coming up. His first touchdown goes for 11. His second touchdown goes for seven. And right after the defensive touchdown by the Falcons, the Buffaloes march down the field and retake the lead. So now on for another extra point. The first one was a high snap to Zunt, which they wound up throwing for a completed pass, but they weren't able to convert the two-point conversion. Rodriguez, the kicker, Zunt to hold. Snap, hold, kick on its way, and this one splits the uprights. A great response by Garden City, a second rushing touchdown by Mario Ruiz. And after a first made extra point by Rodriguez, with 8.35 to go in the second quarter, it's Buffalo's 13 and Wichita Heights 6 here on KWKR 99.9 The Rock. There's some reason we're all here. To create an amazing experience for each life we touch. If we look closely, we might just see there's something about you amazing people. These amazing drinks served this amazingly fast. There's just something about Scooter's Coffee. Buffaloes march it 75 yards down the field. Michael Villalobos with a great series with three runs over 10 yards. But Mario Ruiz finishes off the drive with a seven-yard touchdown run to give Garden City the lead. Cal Friedman here for KWKR 99.9 FM. You can also watch this game live on Southwest Kansas Sports Network on the Garden City High School Buffaloes YouTube channel. Thank you so much to Jared Powers and the crew for keeping that broadcast running. If you're looking for Garden City Community College, that game will be tomorrow at 12 o'clock from Iowa as they take on the number nine Iowa Central Tritons after their 27 to 22 win last week against the Butler Grizzlies. Another great drive from Garden City. Via Lobos has been absolutely dominant on the ground. His biggest rush went for 25 yards to set up the Buffaloes. They just kept chunking it down the field on the ground, and they finish it off with a red zone touchdown by Ruiz. Now Rodriguez will go out to kick, breaking from left to right. The Falcons have one man deep, and Avante Scales lined up at the six. Ruiz sends it away. Scales drops back, feels this one at the seven. That was Rodriguez. Excuse me, he lost the ball and falls back on it at the 18-yard line. Now pushed backwards to the 17. Almost a pivotal mistake by Wichita Heights would have gifted Garden City red zone field position and scales a little slow to get up. 
I think just the situation, he took his eye off the ball. Even though he had it in his hands, he was so focused on trying to find a block up field that he was taken down after losing the ball. Regardless, Wichita Heights will still get it at their own 16-yard line. This is the Falcons offense that has only ran six plays on offense. They've punted twice on a pair of three and outs. Their only points off a defensive touchdown on a fumble return. Tavian Johnson, who's yet to complete a pass so far, the converted wide receiver at quarterback lines up first down and 10. He's gonna throw, pressure on him. He moves out towards the far sideline, looking for something, anything towards the line of scrimmage. Will keep it himself past the Garden City defender and step out of bounds around the 21 yard line. So there's some of that athleticism from Johnson, who had 186 receiving yards last season. We'll carry that one for, we'll say five. 8.20 to go in the second quarter. The Buffaloes with a 13 to six lead. You've gotta like the start for Garden City. They've been stout defensively and pretty sound offensively. If you take away that fumble return on the mistaken pitch from Gomez to Allen, they've moved the ball very well on the ground. Only thing we've yet to see is any movement through the air, but that's to be customed with this triple option offense. Second down and five here for Heights at the 21 yard line. Goes straight up the middle and to about the 22 yard line for a gain of one. Not much room there as they move the side back into the middle of the field. That was Carter who got the carry, his second. And it'll be third down and short. Falcons 0 for 2 on third down so far. They will spot this one at the 23 yard line. They need the 26 to keep the chains moving. Johnson will line up under center. One wide receiver out to each side, 7.50 to go in the first half as the sun sets here in Wichita, the Buffaloes leading by seven. Third and medium for the Falcons. Johnson sends a man in motion, takes the snap, keeps it himself up the middle, gets to around the line to gain. It's gonna be very close to see where they spawn it. And they're gonna give him the first down. They didn't need much. They needed about five yards. It looks like they just about got five in the first first down all night for Wichita Heights comes here in the second quarter. Davian Johnson, when I asked Dominic Dingle about him, he said he brings a level of experience to the quarterback position. Of course, it was a quarterback battle replacing DJ Dingle, who's off at Friends University now. Dingle said he won the job in roughly a day and a half over Vontae Scales due to his knowledge of the positioning of the running backs and the wide receivers. First down and 10, Johnson to throw. Moves out to the right side, pump fakes once, and it's taken down for the sack. Pressure right in his face by Carson Krause. The senior records the first sack of the game for the Buffaloes and a big loss on first down. Johnson pump faked once, moved out to the right side and was just swarmed. Krause brought the pressure. Hogan also on the tackle. David Hogan who had five tackles for loss last season. Also four tackles in this win last year. So second down and very long back at the 20 yard line. Their own 20 here, clock winding under six and a half to go in the second. Snap to Johnson, handoff goes straight up the middle to Jameson Holland, who is gang tackled by a swarm of Buffaloes at the 24 yard line. They need some kind of positive gain after the big sack on first down, it looks like about three. It'll be third down and 11 coming up. Jamison Holland, who was mostly used as a returner last season. He had a kickoff return last season in his junior year. Also was primarily used as a linebacker, stepping into the backfield to replace John Randall, who was a four-star athlete last season out in Utah, excuse me. The Utes with a big time win over Florida last night, 24 to 11 to kick off week one of college football. Man, is it good to have football back here in Southwest Kansas. Third down and 11 here for the Falcons in a very bunch formation at their own 25 yard line. Johnson, the snap, the handoff up the middle. Millicent off of one tackle to the 31 yard line. He's gonna be short by about four or five yards. So again, decision time here for Dominic Dinkle. They'll say about a gain of six on the play. They have it down to the 31 yard line. They're gonna need the 37 if they wanna keep this drive alive. And Tavian Johnson gets the play call and the Falcons are gonna go for it. In their own territory, they need about five yards here. They need to get it to their own 37 yard line. If not, it'll set up Garden City with great field position, already leading it 13 to six of the Buffaloes under five minutes to go. Fourth down here, five yards to go. Johnson sends a man in motion, looks to the sideline and looks like Dominic Dinkle is gonna take a timeout as the play clock was winding down. 
So now both teams have used one timeout here in this first half. We'll take a break. 4.50 to go. Garden City 13, Wichita Heights 6 here on KWKR 99.9 The Rock. When was the last time your family had their best day ever? Come to Garden City, Kansas, where you can slide, splash, and play this summer. The all-new Garden Rapids at the Big Pool. Thrills and chills for the whole family. Parrot Cove Indoor Water Park, where there's something for everyone. No matter what the weather, we have you covered. Garden City, Kansas has the coolest spots under the sun. Make a splash. The mission of the Casnetti Group is to make your insurance experience convenient, simple, and affordable. They would meet a welcoming staff and people that really care about them and want to you know, help them with their needs, whatever that might be. What is most satisfying about what I do is our clients. Bottom line, I love just watching our clients grow and get to be part of their life. Time fourth down coming up for Wichita Heights. They have it at their own 31 yard line. It looked like they were going to go for it at first before a timeout was burned by Dominic Dinkle. They're going to change their mind and they're going to send out the punt team, I believe. So after gaining a first down, some groans come out from the Wichita Heights home fans, but it looks like the Buffaloes are going to get the ball back here with 4.50 to go in the opening half. The Buffaloes leading at 13 to 6 on a pair of rushing touchdowns from Mario Ruiz. So that's Bundle B. Tinkle Cloud. He's had a busy day so far. Also has an extra point so far for the Falcons. That was short. Allen is back deep to receive at the Garden City 32-yard line. Ten seconds to snap. They get the snap off. A good snap to go straight to Tinkle Cloud, who booms this one away down the middle of the field. Allen will call for fair catch and make the catch at the 35-yard line. Of course, here, game number one of the 2023 season. We'll bring you some scores around the rest of Kansas for now. The out-of-town scoreboard brought to you by Crazy House, the boot king of Kansas. Some other whack action. Holcomb leading Liberal 7-0 in the second quarter. Colby with a dominant lead over Ulysses, 20-0 in the second. Lakin leads Staten County 28-0 in the second. Scott City leads Cimarron 14-7 with seven minutes to go in the second. And Hugenson with a 13-0 lead in the second quarter over Southwestern Heights. Also, one more game going on in action. Another whack game. Great Bend with a 14-7 advantage over McPherson in the second. Of course, we will wrap it all up after this game with Aaron Elam back in the... KWKR studio back in Garden City where they're in the air conditioning and we're out in the hot press box here at Wichita Heights Stadium. Beautiful night as the sun is beginning to set and the lights beginning to light up the field here at Heights Stadium. Garden City takes over at their own 36 yard line, first and 10. Handoff goes up the middle to Mario Ruiz. He runs right into the right guard and gets to around the line of scrimmage, maybe a gain of one, but not much room for Ruiz. He hasn't gotten too much going here in this second quarter. He's had four carries for 10 yards after he gained over 50 yards in that first quarter. But his biggest play in the second, of course, that seven-yard touchdown, which has the Buffaloes in front by seven. Ethan Gomez gets the plays from Brian Hill along the far sideline where the fans are filled in brown and white for Garden City. Got to give huge credit to the fans tonight. Of course, this is a very devoted fan base making the trip over three and a half hours here for game number one of the season. Second down and nine. Gomez takes the snap. Pitch around the right side to Sun. He's got plenty of room at the 45 to the 40. And he gets the first down and spins his way to midfield. Little trickery there from the Buffaloes. They fake the handoff right. They went an end around left. And Emilio Zunt gets his first touch of the season and takes it for a Garden City first. Zunt, who had a very busy junior year last year, of course, had a touchdown in a game over Ulysses. Had a big-time season for the basketball team who went 20-2 and two and broke the record for the best start to the season for the Buffs who started 12-0 and 0 on the court at the Garden. Also played baseball, where it's number five in every single sport. And he makes his first play in five in white tonight. First down and ten for Garden City at midfield, protecting a seven-point lead. Bunch formation. Allen in motion. Handoff up the middle to Ruiz, muscling his way to maybe the 48. Gain a one or two there on first down. When I talked to Emilio Zun earlier this week, this is one of the five captains for Garden City, and he said he's really stepped in that leadership role. He's really enjoyed the opportunity to learn what past Buffaloes taught him, 
This is a great Buffaloes program. They had so many great leaders last year, including Jerry Ortega, who moves out from Garden City High School to Garden City Community College. Didn't get any touches in the win over Butler last week. Maybe he'll get one tomorrow against Iowa Central with kickoff at 12 o'clock from Iowa. For now, back to the action here. Under 2.45 to go in the second quarter. Second down and eight. The pitch goes out to the near side for Ethan Allen. Has a hole. Keeps his feeding at the 40. Has room to the right sideline. 30, 20. Allen breaks away at the five. Reaches for the goal line. And they'll say touchdown, Ethan Allen. 50 yards for the senior. And Garden City has blown the game open with 2.24 to go here in the second quarter. It's 19-16, Garden City. It was the far official who said touchdown as Allen stretched off over the goal line. What a play for the senior. His first ever touchdown. And the Buffaloes have their largest lead of the game. Rodriguez out to attempt the extra point. He's one for two today. Holder is done. 20 seconds here on the play clock. Snap, hold, kick on its way. Low. And no good. No good. No good. He hooked it to the right. So Garden City yet again unable to capitalize on the point after. But a big time play for the Buffaloes. Ethan Allen takes it 50 yards to the near sideline. And with 2.24 to go in the second quarter, the Buffaloes with a 19 to 6 lead over Wichita Heights here on KWKR 99.9 The Rock. Integrity. Community focus, accountability, respect, and an entrepreneurial spirit. These are the qualities that make up a good bank. These are also the qualities that define Equity Bank. Equity Bank, we never forget it's your money. When your car's been in a collision, getting it repaired properly is critical for your family's safety and your peace of mind. Skeeter's Body Shop is the only body shop in Southwest Kansas to complete the rigorous training requirements to be Gold Class certified. Certified by Ford, GM, Dodge, Jeep, Honda, Nissan, Hyundai, and many others, and even certified for your new aluminum vehicle, so our repairs won't void your factory warranty. Choose to have your vehicle repaired by professionals. Choose Skeeter's Body Shop in Garden City. Biggest play of the game for the Buffaloes goes 50 yards for six. Ethan Allen, the senior with the third rushing touchdown of the game for the Buffaloes, who have a 19 to six lead here over Wichita Heights with 2.24 to go in the first half. Eddie Rodriguez out to kick out towards the right end zone. The kick away, it's a low kick by Rodriguez that bounces at the 12 and fielded by Scales. He muffed the last one, keeps this one up to the 25 yard line, out to the 30, has a hole and moves out to the 38 yard line before he's tackled by the kicker, Rodriguez. What a turnaround for Scales, who muffed the last kickoff return that he had. He fell on it, but was down to the 16. Instead, he takes that kickoff about 27 yards and gives the Heights Falcons their best starting field position of the game. They'll down him at the 39. A game that has been dominated by Garden City. Heights has only gained one first down on offense. Their only points coming on a defensive touchdown, a return by Cale Milson. You've got to love the start for Garden City otherwise. We have now scored three rushing touchdowns in the first half. Two from Ruiz, one from Allen. Davian Johnson takes it out under center. One wide receiver posts out to each side here for the Falcons, who have yet to complete a pass. Man in motion, Johnson takes the snap. Hand off up the middle to Millicent, who moves his way to the 43-yard line. Gain of four here to open up the hopeful final possession of this half for Garden City. With this 13-point lead, you want to just take this lead into halftime. They have all the momentum right now after the big chunk play for six by Allen. A standout corner last season who had 48 tackles. But when I talked to him, he said he's so excited to play offense this season. Maybe that's why. Second down and medium here for the Falcons. Johnson keeps out to the near sideline, and he is wrapped up at the line of scrimmage for no game. That's Dio Hogan, the junior wrestler playing on the defensive edge, who meets Johnson at the line of scrimmage, and it'll be third down. Playing with his brother, David Hogan, they both returned from last season. They were both key players in this win last season, combining for 12 tackles against the Falcons back in, Wich or, excuse me, back in Garden. 
The fans along the far side will hope to be driving back to Garden with bright spirits tonight. It'll be third down here for Wichita Heights and six yards to go. They need to get to midfield to keep the drive alive. 1.10 to go in the first half. Snap to Johnson, handoff up the middle and he's getting tackled at the line of scrimmage, nowhere to go. And the Buffaloes will force another three and out likely. Just a whole host of Buffaloes got in there. Looked like Colin Plankenhorn, the linebacker, led the charge with a couple of defensive linemen. The clock winding under 48 seconds. Buffaloes do have two timeouts. They haven't used one yet. As the clock's still winding here with under 40 seconds to go in the first half. Falcons are gonna have to snap it. They've got 20 seconds to go. It looks like the Falcons are content to let this clock wind. And now they're gonna send the punt team out. Only 15 seconds to snap. They gotta make this one quick. Sunt will drop back deep to return. Play clock at 11. Falcons still with two timeouts. Let's see if Dominic Dinkle uses one here on the near sideline. Four seconds to snap. They're not even set up yet. And there goes the timeout as the play clock hits zero. So Dinkle does use that timeout here with 14 and a half seconds, we'll say, in the first half. We'll take a 30-second break. Garden City leading at 19 to 6 over Wichita Heights here on KWKR 99.9 The Rock. There's some reason we're all here. Final moments of the first half here from Heights Stadium in Wichita. It's a fourth down for the Falcons, who look like they're going to punt it away to Garden City, who has a 19 to 6 lead here as the first half reaches its close. Cal Freeman here for KWKR 99.9. The Rock, great start for Garden City here in their first game of the season. Mario Ruiz gave them the lead in the first quarter on a 11-yard rushing touchdown. Since then, back-to-back -back touchdowns from the Buffs, one from Ruiz from seven yards, one from Allen that went for 50 yards. And a team that dominated on the ground last season averaged north of 270 yards per game in a seven and three season. They picked up right where they left off as the Buffs are looking to challenge for the WAC title again this season. So the Falcons will send their punt team out for the third time or fourth time in this half as Nicholas Tinklecloud will send it away to, I believe that's Emilio Zunt back at the 20-yard line. Check me, that's Ethan Allen. Snap gets away. It is Zunt, excuse me, who's going to call for fair catch. He had no interest in returning it. It's going to be downed inside the five most likely, downed at the goal line. What a perfect punt with two seconds to go in the half. Garden City was more than content with just letting the clock wind, making sure they didn't muff the punt and give it back to Wichita Heights. Now they have to make sure they don't take a safety here. Because with two seconds, you got to be careful right now if you're Garden City. You've got this 13-point lead. All you have to do is just move, likely, Ethan Gomez forward and make sure that you don't give the Falcons two right before the end of the first half. It looks like Wichita Heights is going to come out in normal defense and not rush the passer. It looks like they're going to put seven men in the box, and they're going to put three safeties deep. I say deep. They're at about the like 15-yard line. As the Buffs have it in the shadow of their own end zone, they're likely going to run one play and bring it to the end of the first half. The only points scored by Wichita Heights have come on defense so far. The Buffs are going to try to prevent any more defensive points. Gomez under center. And it looks like offside is going to be committed as one of the Falcons' defensive linemen jumped over the line of scrimmage. It looked like exactly what they wanted to do, just down Gomez in the end zone as we're waiting the call. And it is offsides against the defense. That'll likely protect Garden City from a safety. Got to like what Garden City has done in the first half. Not only 19 points, but they have not committed a penalty so far. Exactly what Brian Hill would have wanted when I talked to him earlier this week. He said control the controllables. That's what the Buffs have done tonight. Two seconds to go in the opening half. Bunch formation. Gomez takes the snap, drops back two steps and knees it. And that brings us to the end of the first half. A dominant first half by Garden City at Heights Stadium. Three rushing touchdowns in the first half. Two by Ruiz, one by Allen to give the Buffaloes a 19-6 lead over Wichita Heights. We'll take a break and come right back with the timeout sports bar and restaurant halftime show here on KWKR 99.9 The Rock. Garden City 19, Wichita Heights 6. When was the last time your family had their best day ever?
Come to Garden City, Kansas, where you can slide, splash, and play this summer. The all-new Garden Rapids at the Big Pool. Thrills and chills for the whole family. Parrot Cove Indoor Water Park, where there's something for everyone. No matter what the weather, we have you covered. Garden City, Kansas has the coolest spots under the sun. Make a splash. And the mission of the Casnetti Group is to make your insurance experience convenient, simple, and affordable. They would meet a welcoming staff and people that really care about them and want to you know, help them with their needs, whatever that might be. What is most satisfying about what I do is our clients, bottom line. I love just watching our clients grow and get to be part of their life. Integrity, community focus, accountability, respect, and an entrepreneurial spirit. These are the qualities that make up a good bank. These are also the qualities that define Equity Bank. Equity Bank. We never forget it's your money. When your car's been in a collision, getting it repaired properly is critical for your family's safety and your peace of mind. Skeeter's Body Shop is the only body shop in Southwest Kansas to complete the rigorous training requirements to be Gold Class certified. Certified by Ford, GM, Dodge, Jeep, Honda, Nissan, Hyundai, and many others, and even certified for your new aluminum vehicle, so our repairs won't void your factory warranty. Choose to have your vehicle repaired by professionals. Choose Skeeter's Body Shop in Garden City. Sports Bar and Restaurant is your spot for great specials and a great time. Serving breakfast all day and great smoke barbecue located at Taylor Avenue in Garden City. Cal Friedman here for KWKR 99.9 FM. The Buffaloes off a 7-3 season last year, off to a great start here in 2023. It got going right from the opening play of the game. The opening kickoff from Wichita Heights went out of bounds, setting up Garden City at their own 35-yard line. They marched down the field nine plays for 65 yards. They also had a big down fourth down conversion on a 12-yard run by quarterback Ethan Gomez to set up the first score of the 2023 season. Amario Ruiz, 11-yard run up the middle. A man who had five touchdowns last season as the fourth leading rusher for Garden City last season behind departing senior, Ryan, or excuse me, Zach Kiongsefet, Ryan Hyman, and Jerry Ortega. Buffaloes dominated that first quarter. They forced two three and outs against the Falcons Starting off to a dominant start, including a sack in the backfield by Braden Dibble, and another sack by sophomore linebacker Colton Blankenhorn, who has looked absolutely incredible so far. The only starting sophomore in this game between either team, and he is making the most of it. However, the second quarter opened up as a disaster for Garden City. They were trying to line up a pitch play to Ethan Allen on the near sideline. It was batted by linebacker Kale Milson, who recovered his own bat and returned it 48 yards for the Falcons' first touchdown of the season. Their following extra point was kicked low and no good, which meant the game was tied at six. But Garden City did exactly what you would have wanted, responding off of the defensive touchdown by Heights with a big touchdown drive, ending in a seven-yard run by Mario Ruiz after Michael Villalobos basically carried them down the field. He had a 25-yard run to midfield to kickstart the drive, then another run for 12 yards and another run for 11 yards. Villalobos, who hasn't had the ball too much in this game, he's only had four carries, Three of them came in the first quarter. Our projected stats of him say about 58 yards on the ground for Villalobos, who yet again set up Ruiz in the red zone, carried it seven yards straight up the middle to give Garden City the lead, and they kept piling it on. The defense looked stronger and stronger as that half went on. They didn't give up any points. They only gave up one first down for the Falcons in that entire half, and they executed again on their biggest play of the game. A pitch went out to the sideback, Ethan Allen, who carried it 50 yards along the near sideline for six, his first career touchdown to put the Buffaloes ahead 19 to six. Allen closes the first half with five carries, I'll say, with that 50 yard run being the best of them. He had a couple carries on that first drive for 12 yards, also had a six yard carry in that half. For Garden City, they didn't complete any passes in that first half, albeit they only tried three passing plays. One in completion by Ethan Gomez on a fourth down and nine, I'll say, from the 30 yard line of Wichita Heights. One play, of course, was that fourth down, which he took off and ran with. 
and then he had a sack by Wichita Heights. The Falcons have not been able to do anything on offense. Jamison Hall leads the way, but he's still at about 15 yards in the game as it's been a great start from the Garden City defense, which has been led by Dio Hogan and Braden Sneath, who have been the lead tacklers so far. Braden Dibble with a couple tackles for loss as well from the free safety position as they have just absolutely swamped Wichita Heights in this one. Of course, this is a game that Garden City is... Very successful win in week one of the season. Brian Hill has them prepared very well. He said the biggest thing was to control the controllables, and they have done that tonight. They have not taken any penalties, whereas the Falcons have taken some big ones. Of course, that kickoff return, they had a face mask penalty on the second scoring drive by Garden City. And just before the end of the half, while they pinned the Buffaloes back at the one-yard line, an offside to take away a potential safety opportunity for Wichita Heights. The Buffaloes defense has not forced any turnovers so far, which is what they did in this game last season when they forced three in that 36-26 win. No turnovers tonight. However, they've only given up one first down, which was a five-yard run by quarterback Tavian Johnson. The Buffaloes lead it 19-6 to here, under 10 minutes to go before the start of the second half. We are going to step aside. We'll come right back with the Crazy House out-of-town scoreboard. We've got plenty of action going along Western Kansas Broadcast Center tonight. We'll give you the updates from Dodge City, Cimarron, Scott City, and many other scores, including Great Bend and Liberal, who are both in action in the WAC. That's all coming up when we come back here on the Time Out Sports Bar and Restaurant Halftime Show. Garden City 19, Wichita Heights 6 here on KWKR 99.9 The Rock. Welcome back to Heights Stadium here in Wichita, 10 minutes north of downtown. Garden City enjoying their night on the road so far. The Buffaloes lead it 19 to 6 over the homestanding Falcons. Cal Friedman here on the Timeout Sports and Bar Restaurant Halftime Show, serving breakfast all day and great smoke barbecue located at Taylor Avenue in Garden City. 
Wichita Heights band performing on the side, or excuse me, at midfield. I mean, it is incredible just to have football back. The sun is now completely set here in Wichita. Beautiful night. Great turnout from the Wichita Heights fans and the Garden City fans who made the trip north of three and a half hours out east here to Kansas is one of the biggest cities as the Buffaloes enjoying the lead. Let's bring you around some of the other scores that are going on on the Western Kansas Broadcast Center networks and even more. We will start in WAC action where Hayes leads Junction City 7 to nothing at the half. Garden City and Hayes will meet in the WAC later on this season in a game that will likely determine who's going to win the WAC this season as those two teams were very strong in 2022. Other scores, Hugoton in a blowout leading Southwestern Heights 35 to nothing. Colby leads Ulysses Tigers 20 to 2 at the break. Holcomb with a 7 to nothing lead over Larned at the half. You can get to that action on K-Buff with the conclusion of Kansas Jayhawks football after that game. Lakin leads Stanton County 35 to nothing at the break. Scott City leads Cimarron 21 to seven. You can join Adam Cadavy on the call for that one on KSKL. And Wichita West leading Dodge City eight to seven over on Z98. You can catch the action with Mark McClure out there about maybe a couple miles south of us here as there's a lot of action going on in Wichita tonight, as well as Wichita County, who is enjoying a beatdown of Wheatland, enjoying a 54 to nothing lead in the biggest score so far around the scores here in Garden City. As a reminder, after the game ends, we will bring you the Robinson Furniture Post Game Show. We will hear from Buffalo's head coach, Brian Hill, and our a and Body Shop Player of the Game, which could be a whole host of players right now. Mario Ruiz and Ethan Allen have the touchdowns for Garden City. Ruiz with touchdowns of 11 yards and 7 yards on the ground. Allen a 50-yard run. As a correction, Wichita County did win that game 54 to nothing, so it finished out there. As a reminder, thank you so much to Aaron Elam, who got us started today on Buffs Game Day at 5.30. He did a great job covering, also did a very good interview with me, so big props to Aaron Elam. But of course, after this game ends, the coverage does not stop. Right after the final broadcast here on the Robinson Furniture Post Game Show, right after we hear from the ANA Body Shop Player of the Game and break down the final number, is brought to you by Grant County Bank. We will send it back to Garden City, where he will bring you the Southwest Kansas football wrap-up, an opportunity to hear from fellow broadcasters and coaches from across the state and a chance for you to call in and give your voice heard whether it's to comment on your favorite player your favorite team's performance catch Aaron Elam for that one that's after the final conclusion of this game between Garden City and Wichita Heights now of course if you're looking for more Garden City football across the season we will have every play here on KWKR 99.9 The Rock and tomorrow or excuse me next week at this exact same time, we will have Garden City in their home opener, taking on Wichita North, a team that they beat 77-6 to last season at a Buffalo Stadium in Garden City. Coverage begins at Buffalo Game Day at 5.30 with Aaron Elam before we get things underway with the American Implant pregame show at 6.30. And if you're looking for Garden City Community College football, big-time game for the Bronx Busters tomorrow as they travel to Iowa Central to take on the number nine Tritons in a top 10 matchup in Juco. That one will get underway at 12 o'clock from Iowa, the American Implant pregame show between the Bronx Busters and the Tritons starting at 11.30 in the longest road trip of the season for the Bronx Busters from Fort Dodge. That's gonna do it here for our halftime show brought to you by Time Out Sports Bar and Restaurant. Of course, that out of town scoreboard is brought to you by Crazy House, the boot king of Kansas. Plenty of scores that we will update you on as this second half moves on, but the most important score, Garden City 19, Wichita Heights 6. We'll be back in a moment. Kickoff about two and a half minutes away in the second half. It'll be the Falcons getting the ball to start the second half when we come back here on KWKR 99.9 The Rock.
Welcome back to Heights Stadium here, 10 minutes north of downtown Wichita. Halftime wrapping up as the Garden City Buffaloes leading the homestanding Wichita Heights Falcons 19-6. Cal Friedman wrapping up the Timeout Sports Bar and Restaurant Halftime Show. Timeout Sports Bar and Restaurant is your spot for great specials and a great time. Serving breakfast all day and great smoke barbecue located on Taylor Avenue in Garden City. Man, does barbecue sound great right now. We've been on the road all day long. I got on the way around 12 o'clock today. I had some delays that got me back on the road, but I got here around 4 o'clock. It was smoking hot here. I want to say it was in the 90s with humidity. I've been talking to so many people. I think I brought the humidity from Florida here to Kansas because it has been hot and it has been muggy. But this game has now cooled off. We're into the 70s. Sun is completely set. It is truly a Friday Night Lights atmosphere. Something that we've been waiting for all summer long. We talked about it earlier this morning on the Morning Roundup with me and Mark McClure. And it's been an absolutely dominant start for Garden City. They've got three rushing touchdowns in this game. Mario Ruiz has two of them. Scored on the opening possession of the season for Garden City on an 11-yard score at the middle. Got a second one in the second quarter from seven yards. The biggest play of this game from either team has been Ethan Allen's 50-yard run along the near sideline to the crib as Garden City with three rushing touchdowns in that first half. The Heights' only touchdown came on a offensive blunder by the Buffalo's quarterback, Ethan Gomez, who tried to pitch it to Allen. It was batted by Cale Millison right down the middle of the field after he exploited a gap on a blitz and took it back 48 yards to the house to give the Falcons their only points of the first half. Questions have got to be asked for Dominic Dinkle here. It is Starting his sixth season in his tenure as Heights head coach, the offense just didn't have it in the first half of the Falcons. They only gained one first down, which came on a third down conversion on a run by quarterback Tavian Johnson, who is still yet to complete a pass. Now, this is someone that when I asked Dinkle about him earlier this week, he said he doesn't have to be the best player in this offense. He kind of just has to be the guy who understands the spacing, which is exactly what he did. He won the quarterback job in a day and a half over Avante Scales, who's had a big game defensively so far for Heights. But in this half, they've got to try and get the ball moving downfield. Garden City's done a great job locking up the senior cornerback duo of Ethan, Z or excuse me, Ethan Allen and Emilio Zunz. Got to get those two names mixed out because they've been absolutely great in this first half. They have shut down the Falcons' passing offense. They've only tried a handful of passes. They haven't been able to complete one, and there's been a couple of sacks in this game, one by Dio Hogan at the end of the first half. Both teams have taken the field. Heights is... Meeting in the right end zone, Garden City along the far sideline with plenty of fans in attendance for tonight. It's been an absolutely great turnout here at Heights Stadium. The Falcons fans have come out in full force. Garden City fans, of course, it's a long trip. This is the longest road trip of the season for the Buffaloes. They've driven three and a half hours plus from Garden over to Wichita. About 10 minutes north of downtown. Of course, they made this trip a couple times last season. They travel here to take on Wichita North, who they'll meet next week. They took on Wichita Heights. Or excuse me, Wichita West. They played Wichita Heights at home last season. And they traveled out to the Hatchet game where they played at Riverfront Stadium and beat Dodge City 28-14. This season, we have great news. That Hatchet game will not be at a neutral site. It'll be back in Garden City for the first time in four years as the Buffaloes will try and defend the Hatchet game. That's much later on this season. Of course, next week's action will continue non-conference play. This is a non-conference game, one of four for the Buffaloes this season. Of course, they will take on three teams from Wichita and Ulysses later on in the season on the road against the Tigers. Whack play for Garden City will open up in a couple weeks in September back on the 22nd when they pay visit to Hayes. They will host Liberal on the 29th. They host Dodge City on the 13th of October and they close the regular season at Great Bend on the 20th of October for play-ins, regional championships, and hopefully state quarterfinals and state semifinals and more for this Garden City team. Well, they looked a team that could make it a run to the state semifinals after their 19-6 lead in the first half. They got the ball first and scored, so they will kick off going from left to right across your radio dial, punting towards the Wichita end zone. Of course, they will be defending the Heights end zone. The Falcons have yet to take the field. It'll be Eddie Rodriguez who will kick off going from left to right. Dominant start for this Buffalo's defense. Have to love what you've seen for 11th-year defensive coordinator Justin Reich. We will see if the Buffaloes can continue their dominant stuff on defense. We've played 24 minutes, now another 24 underway as Rodriguez kicks this one towards the far sideline. It'll be fielded at the 23-yard line by one of the upbacks on the run, and he takes it to the 35-yard line. Wichita Heights had one really big run back in the first half. They took it all the way to the 39. They'll get good field position here at the 35-yard line, chasing a 13-point lead. 
What changes will Dominic Dinkle make at the half? Quarterback Tavian Johnson is yet to move the ball downfield. Jameson Holland is their leading playmaker on offense. He's at about 15 yards, give or take, on offense. Of course, we don't have stats tonight. We're keeping track of those manually. But the big stat that we have to keep track of, Garden City, 19-6 in front as we begin the second half. Wichita Heights at their own 35, 11.55 to go in the third quarter. Flexbone setting in in motion is Palmer. Handoff goes straight up the middle to Millicent, who gets one yard and is swarmed backwards by Garden City. Evan Finch from the safety position came up to help finish off that tackle along with Plankenhorn and Hogan on the defensive line. They'll say a gain of two or three. Big time key for the Falcons in the second half. Can they get the passing offense moving? They did not do much through the air. They didn't do anything through the air, actually, I should say, in that first half. Garden City's defense has been stout in this game. Falcons have also killed themselves on penalties in this game, including a face mask, which set up Garden City's second touchdown, their go-ahead touchdown run by Ruiz. Second down and seven. Heights takes the snap. It's a read option out to the near side for Johnson. He flings it forward. It's a loose ball. It's going to be incomplete. He flung it forward. They were trying to run the option. Underhanded throw goes out to the 41-yard line. No Buffalo could get that, and it's third down and about seven. Well, as we mentioned, this is a Wichita Heights team that's transitioning from a spread offense last season with John Randall to a triple option offense this season. And Tavian Johnson, a wide receiver by trade last year. We'll take it back out, and it'll be a third down and seven yards. They're going to need the 45-yard line of Wichita Heights to keep this drive going. They only converted on one third down in that entire first half. It was on a Johnson run. We'll see what they do here. Johnson takes the snap. It's a pitch out to the near sideline. They've got room at the 40. Now at the 45 pass midfield. Big gainer for Wichita Heights as they take it to the 40-yard line. Avon Mbule, the junior, takes that one for the biggest play of the game for the Falcons on offense. And it's their second first down all game as they take it to about the 42-yard line. Man, did Heights need a play like that? You call up the misdirection, you fake the pitch to the far sideline, you have it come near, and Mbule, who didn't touch the ball in the entire first half, with a big time carry there. Clock stopped at 11.02 after he was run out of bounds. First and 10 for Wichita Heights inside Garden City territory for the first time all game. Trailing at 19 to six, they have it down at the 42 yard line. And now Dominic Dinkle's gonna call for timeout. They were adjusting their formation. They were trying to put some of their wide receivers out wide. The play clock was running down. And after the big chunk play, Heights used their first time out of the second half. With that, we'll take it with them here with 11.02 to go in the third quarter. Garden City 19 and Wichita Heights 6 here on KWKR 99.9 The Rock. When was the last time your family had their best day ever? Come to Garden City, Kansas, where you can slide, splash, and play this summer. The all-new Garden Rapids at the Big Pool. Thrills and chills for the whole family. Parrot Cove Indoor Water Park, where there's something for everyone. No matter what the weather, we have you covered. Garden City, Kansas has the coolest spots under the sun. Make a splash. And the mission of the Casnetti Group is to make your insurance experience convenient, simple, and affordable. They would meet a welcoming staff and people that really care about them and want to you know, help them with their needs, whatever that might be. What is most satisfying about what I do is our clients, bottom line. I love just watching our clients grow and get to be part of their life. First down here for Wichita Heights, driving at the Garden City 42-yard line to open up the second half, trailing by 13. Tavian Johnson takes the snap. It's a keeper out to the nearest sideline, and he moves his way to the 36-yard line. Still moving the legs, gets about nine yards on the run. Big-time physical run by the senior quarterback, standing at 5'9", 180. He gets eight yards on the keeper. Wichita Heights with their biggest play of the game so far, a 19-yard run by one of their backup running backs, Avon Mbule, his first touch all game, helped the Falcons convert a big-time third down. After that third down conversion, the Falcons couldn't get set, and they burned a timeout. Clock winding here with 10.28 to go in the third quarter. Garden City 19 and Wichita Heights 6. But the Falcons showing promise for the first time all night on offense. They only had one first down in that entire first half. 
Second down and two, flex bone set. Reverse out to the near sideline and getting the first down and a little more to about the 30 yard line. That's Tamar Gray, one of the younger players in this unit, a sophomore, uses the wheels, kicks up five and the Falcons have it inside the 30. Tamar Tinkle actually made notice of Tamar Gray when I talked about him on Wednesday. He said a lot of players will make plays with their wideouts. We're so dynamic in the slot. Guys like Tamar Johnson, or excuse me, Tamar Gray and Caleb Martin will make plays for this team. Tavian Jensen, all he had to do is just hand it off to him and let the speedy sophomore use his wheels. First touch that he's had in varsity football, and he moves the chains. First down and 10 for the Falcons at the 30-yard line of Garden City, trailing my 13. Flex bone set. Johnson will throw for the first time today. Caught on the near side by Bodney off of one tackle and almost got out of it. He had green grass in front of him, but he's wrapped up by Allen after a five-yard gain. Just a quick bubble screen to the near sideline. Allen did a great job to wrap him up. First completion all game between either team. And it goes to the 6'1 sophomore, Camarion Bodney. He appeared on the freshman and JV squads last season for the Falcons. And they'll say gain of six, excuse me. So second down and short. At the 24-yard line, Falcons trying to get it to the 20 to keep the chains moving. They motion the four-side wide receiver in. That's Gilkey. Johnson sends a man in motion, takes the snap. Handoff goes straight up the middle at the 20-yard line. First down and more. Breaking the tackle is Hollins inside the five, and he's taken down just before the goal line. Another big chunk play by Wichita Heights. Their best drive all night. Holland takes that one 23 yards and sets the Falcons up in goal to go. The Falcons have entered the Lewis Automotive Group Red Zone. Lewis Automotive, your automotive home of drivers in southwest Kansas. First down and goal for the Falcons at the two. They'll say a 22-yard gain. Johnson sends him in motion, takes the snap, hands it off up the middle, reaching for the goal line. He's just short. It was Holland again searching his first touchdown of the season. They'll say gain of one, second and inches to go at the goal line here for Heights. Clock winding under eight and a half minutes to go here in this third quarter. Wichita Heights, after not moving the ball at all in the first half, have gained multiple first downs on this drive. And the Falcons, one yard away from their first offensive touchdown of the season. It's down at the half yard line. I don't even want to call it second and goal from the one. It's second and goal from the half yard line. One wide receiver spin out to the far side. Handoff goes straight up the middle. Rodriguez stuffs it. Again, they go to Holland, and Eddie Rodriguez jumped the snap at the perfect time, meets him in the backfield, third down and goal. Rodriguez, an experienced player, had seven tackles for a loss last season. And he's got his first here in 2023. And the Buffalo is trying for what could be a huge goal line stance. Like I said, it was down to the half yard line. Now it's down exactly at the one. 7.43 to go in the third quarter. Heights trailing at 19 to six. Third down and goal at the one. Johnson comes out in the flex bone offense. One wide receiver to each side. Eight to snap for the Falcons. Johnson made a motion. He pitches it to the near side and walking into the end zone for the touchdown. Lucas Meyer and the Falcons strike on their opening drive of the half. It's Garden City 19 and Wichita Heights 12 with an extra point coming up. Garden City did a great job in those first two goal-to-go -go opportunities, but ultimately the Falcons get a push on the offensive line. They go to the near side instead of trying to go up the middle and score their first offensive touchdown of the 2023 season. Tindal Cloud out for the extra point to bring this game within six. They are 0 for 1 so far tonight. Snap, hold. Kick is with that and no good. The hold went down and then up, and yet again, Heights fail on an extra point opportunity. But an encouraging sign for the Falcons. They march the ball down the field, a 70-yard drive to bring this game within one score. 7.25 to go in the third quarter. Garden City still with a 19-12 lead over Wichita Heights here on KWKR 99.9 The Rock. Integrity. Community focus, accountability, respect, and an entrepreneurial spirit. These are the qualities that make up a good bank. These are also the qualities that define Equity Bank. 
Equity Bank. We never forget it's your money. Nine play, 70 yard touchdown drive by Wichita Heights to open up the second half. It takes five minutes and 25 seconds, excuse me, 45 seconds off the board. I can't do math right, but regardless, Garden City still with a 19 to 12 lead over Wichita Heights. Cal Freeman here for KWKR 99.9 .9 FM. The Broncos, or excuse me, the Buffaloes with three rushing touchdowns in that first half will get the ball for the first time here in this second half. Their lead has been trimmed down to seven after the extra point was missed. The one-yard touchdown run by Lucas Meyer. The junior stands at 5'7", 175. Falcons will kick off from right to left across your radio dial. Villalobos and Allen back deep to return for Garden City. Kick away towards the far end zone. Allen will field at the 18-yard line. Take this one out towards the far sideline. He's at the 25, cuts over one defender, gets past the 30-yard line, and is wrestled down at the 34. Good return there by the cornerback, who already has a touchdown in this game on a 50-yard run. And now the Buffalo's offense will try and respond. All right, uh, going to three. On the only touchdown by Wichita Heights in the first half, Garden City did a perfect job to respond, drove down the field, and scored a touchdown on a seven-yard rush by Mario Ruiz as Shanes gets set. Ethan Gomez back under center as there is an injured Buffalo on the field. They're going to help him up. We're going to get a number in a moment. Looks like it might have been Allen, who's a little slow to get up, but he's going off on his own power, so good news there for Buffs fans. On two, on two. His return went about 17 yards. It'll start at the 34-yard line here for Garden City. He's had plenty of great field position throughout this game. A couple big touchdown drives, one of them going 65 yards to open up the game, another one going about 70 yards on that 50-yard touchdown by Allen. Ethan Gomez back under center. Made one huge play in the first half on the opening drive. He had a fourth down conversion when he tried to pass, took off, and ran along the far sideline. A big-time play, which set up the touchdown for Ruiz. Comes out in a bunch formation. One wide receiver out to each side here. First down and 10. Takes the snap and hands it off to Ruiz. And this one's blown up straight in the backfield. That is Nate Campbell, one of the leaders on this team. Something with 100 tackles last season. And a tackle for a loss here to open up the second half. And all of a sudden, you can feel the momentum shifting towards Heights way. The momentum has not felt like this all night long. Garden City started the game dominantly, scoring on their opening drive. Even after Heights scored on that defensive mistake, Garden City marched down the field, retook the lead. They control a 13-point lead going into the half. But Heights, with their best drive of the game, a one-yard touchdown by Lucas Meyer, has brought this game within seven. Six seconds to snap here for the Buffaloes who just break the huddle here. 6.35 to go here in the third quarter. Second down and long. One second to go. They get it off. It's a pitch out to the near side via Lobos. We had a big first half. At the 35, flag flies as he gets to about the 41-yard line. It's in the backfield at about the 31-yard line, third by one of the back judges. This one could be coming back. At the moment, it's going to be third and about four. We're waiting on the call here. The Buffaloes didn't commit any penalties throughout that first half. They might have just committed their first of the game here. Buffs offensive unit has retreated back to the 25-yard line. We're still waiting on the official call. There's two officials calling it over. Head judge breaks that conversation and is now ready to make the call. And there's a block in the back against Garden City. This one's coming back. So take away what could have been an eight, nine-yard carry for Villa Lobos, who did very well in that first half including a 25-yard rush. First penalty all night against Garden City. Pushes them way back. So it's first they need the 44-yard line. The back judge has put it at the 22. So this is going to be, I believe, if I have my wrath right this time, second down and 22. I have the nod of approval from Jared Powers. All right, there we go. I need, I need a little redemption right there. I didn't have the uh, time possession right in the first time coming out of break but now I've got that one right so Ethan Gomez comes back out under center 
It's going to be second down and 22 for Garden City at their own 22-yard line. Two wide receivers split out to this near side are Zunt and Sneath. Man in motion, snap, handoff up the middle to Ruiz. Breaks out of one tackle, but then is tackled after about a modest gain of three or four. Wichita Heights is swarming to Ruiz. The power back hasn't been able to get anything going here on this opening drive of the second half. It's going to be third down and very long. So a gain of two for Ruiz, who had 61 yards rushing in that first quarter, including that 11-yard touchdown. But he's been quiet since. The Falcons have done a great job just plugging the middle, which is where mostly all of Ruiz's runs have gone so far tonight. 5.30 to go here in the third quarter. Buffalo's facing a third and 20 from their own 24-yard line. Gomez hands it off to Villalobos, who is swarmed in the backfield. Maybe got one yard back, but it's going to be fourth down and very long, and the Buffaloes are going to be forced to punt. They try the reverse. They were faking it to the near side. They flip it over to Villalobos, who was running left. He just had nowhere to go. Ran right into an offensive lineman. The Falcons win the push up front, and the Buffaloes will punt. And now all of the momentum going the Heights way. And the Falcons are going to get the ball back potentially with a chance to tie this game. Kale Millicent has dropped back to return this punt away from Eddie Rodriguez. Clock winding under 4 minutes 50 seconds to go in the third quarter. Snap to Rodriguez. He sends this one away. It's a low kick that's going to take a bounce at the 48-yard line of Heights. It's going to roll out of bounds at about the 43-yard line. So the Falcons are going to get great field position here. Seven yards shy of midfield with an opportunity to tie this game for the first time since the second quarter. Big time drive for Wichita Heights to open up this half. They got a big time run on third down by Avon and Boule, which lit up the crowd here at Heights Stadium. They got a big time run as well from Jameson Holland. His biggest carry of the game went 22 yards, which set up excuse me, which set up the Falcons at around the two-yard line. They took a couple times from Gold Coast situation, but they were able to pound it in on a one-yard shift by Lucas Meyer. Cal Friedman here for KWKR 99.9 FM. Big-time football weekend for us. Of course, you got this game tonight, which looks to be coming down to the wire here as we're about halfway through this third quarter, a little over halfway through with 4.39 to go. But, of course, tomorrow you got top 10 matchup in JUCO football. Number five, Garden City. Visits number nine, Iowa Central, and rematch of last season's game, which finished as a 40 to 21 win for the Tritons. Garden City, who started last season 0 and 3, trying to sort this season 2 and 0 and cement themselves as one of the powerhouses in JUCO football this season. The American Emblem pregame show gets underway at 11:30 kickoff at high noon in Iowa. The Hawkeye State for Bronkbusters and Tritons. If you're just joining us here from Wichita Heights Stadium, the Falcons with all the momentum right now. They drove down the field 70 yards. They scored on their opening drive here in this second half. The Buffaloes have just been forced to punt, and the Falcons momentarily will retake the field with solid field position down at the 44-yard line after a good punt by Rodriguez gave the Falcons no opportunity to run that one back. Of course, we're here on KWKR 99 The Rock, but if you want to tune into this game live, you can also tune in on the Garden City High School Buffalo's YouTube channel on the Southwest Kansas Sports Network, where Jaron Powers and his crew have made the trip out to Hike Stadium and have that game streamed live over YouTube. They'll also have tomorrow's coverage of Iowa Central and Garden City. Now we're ready to resume this game here. 439 to go in the third quarter. Wichita Heights with the ball at the 44-yard line trying to tie this game or potentially take the lead depending on what they decide to do. They're 0 for 2 on PAT so far today. I wouldn't be surprised if the Falcons maybe change this game up and try and retake the lead in this, or excuse me, take the lead for the first time this game. They've got all the momentum right now. They have absolutely dominated this third quarter. All it takes is one play to flip the momentum back the other way. The Falcons have not turned the ball over yet. They've punted a whole host of times, but they have yet to give the ball to this Buffalo's defense, which was so stout in the first half. First down and 10, Johnson to throw, throwing one down the near sideline for Cray. He brought it in at the 41-yard line of Gordon City. He went up and got it over Emilio Zunt. A big time play for the sophomore. The biggest pass play of the game from either team. And the Falcons have it inside Garden City territory. Johnson, who had one completed pass on a bubble screen to Camarion Bodney, Decides to go over the top for the first time. And it goes for a big gainer, and it puts the Falcons at the 42. First down and 10. 
Snap to Johnson. He gives it off to Gray, who just had the catch, and he's wrestled it around the line of scrimmage. Trying to go for an end around after he picked up a first down on the last drive. That play goes for nothing, but he gets a big clap from Camarion Bodney, one of the other wide receivers on this team. Got to reward the hustle of Gray. 5'7", 135, the sophomore in his varsity debut has just made the biggest reception all night long. They'll say no gain on that play. It'll be second down and 10 momentarily for the Falcons at the Garden City 42-yard line. They trail 19 as well with four minutes to go in the third quarter. Tavian Johnson under center has completed two passes, one for five yards and the other one for about 19. He takes the snap and hands it off right up the middle. The ball is out on the floor. Looks like Garden City has it. And they do. Right as we were talking about how Wichita Heights hasn't turned the ball over, Holland pops it free. Finch, it looks like, fell on it. And the Buffaloes force a key turnover to flip momentum back their way. I'm not sure who punched it out. It was a handoff right up the middle that was going for five yards, and Holland just couldn't hold on to it. Big time play, the first turnover for us all season for this Garden City defense. Man, what a time for it. Everything was going Wichita Heights way here in this second half. Now the Buffaloes get the ball at their own 33-yard line, 3.46 to go in the third quarter. Buffs 19 and Falcons 12. Flexbone set up. One wide receiver out to each side. Villalobos in motion towards the far sideline. Flags fly immediately as the pitch went out to Ruiz. This one should be coming back. It is a false start against Garden City. Didn't get a number, but it looked like along the right side of the offensive line. And after not committing any penalties in that first half, Garden City's committed two. We're now getting the replay. I believe that it was Finch who punched it free for Garden City and Emilio Zunt who fell on it. So two experienced players, Zunt, the senior, recovers the fumble that Finch forced. Finch, the junior free safety, who's made a couple of really nice plays tonight around the running game. So after that first play goes backwards on the penalty, it'll be first down and 15 here for Garden City. They need their own 42-yard line to pick up the six. They have it at the 27. Now they'll spread it out a little bit. One wide receiver out to each side. Man in motion, handoff to Ruiz. First time he gets a big hole. He breaks off a one tackle and moves his way forwards off of the defender to about the 36-yard line. He was wrapped up initially, used the lower body strength to stay up, and was hit from behind and sort of bounced forwards to gain an extra yard or two. That's much needed carry for Ruiz because he has not had a whole ton of running lanes since he scored that second touchdown. Most of the running offense from Garden City since then has come from Michael Villalobos, the junior. Clock winding to 3.13 to go in the third quarter. What a great game we've had. Exactly what you want here on opening night. There's been some mistakes. Garden City has dominated the game on the ground and now forced their first turnover on a fumble recovery by Emilio Zunt. Second down. Handoff to Ruiz, goes straight up the middle, moving the pile and pushing his way to the 40-yard line to set up third down and short. Jaquel Raya on the tackle, the sophomore for Wichita Heights. It'll set up third down and I believe three. They have it at the 39, they're going to need the 42. Gomez retreating to the sideline to talk it over with 14th year head coach Brian Hill. Someone who knows exactly how much football means here in this Garden City area. Of course, he played and coached at Garden City Community College. Now starting his 15th season as head coach of the Buffs, 72 and 53 across his first 14 seasons. Third and short, pitch goes out to the left side for Ruiz. Gets a good block from Villalobos, but he's wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. Big time play for the Falcons. Miles Walker, the senior with the tackle for loss, and the Buffaloes are likely to punt again. So the Buffaloes, after running up the middle for a couple times, trying to move it forwards on the ground. Instead, it was Walker who makes the play and sends the punt unit out. Fourth down and seven. It'll be Rodriguez to punt away deep towards Millicent. He's had a couple nice returns. It's a low punt that Rodriguez has to scoop the field and sends this one away. It's a short punt. It's going to take a bounce at the 40, bounce towards the 35, and Garden City will down it at the 36-yard line of Wichita Heights. The Falcons' defense has started strong in this half, but the Buffaloes' defense got a big-time fumble recovery. We're going to take a 30-second break and come right back here. 132 to go in the third quarter. Buffaloes 19, Wichita Heights 12 on KWKR 99.9 .9 The Rock.
When your car's been in a collision, getting it repaired properly is critical for your family's safety and your peace of mind. Skeeter's Body Shop is the only body shop in Southwest Kansas to complete the rigorous training requirements to be Gold Class certified. Certified by Ford, GM, Dodge, Jeep, Honda, Nissan, Hyundai, and many others, and even certified for your new aluminum vehicle, so our repairs won't void your factory warranty. Choose to have your vehicle repaired by professionals. Choose Skeeter's Body Shop in Garden City. First down and 10 for Wichita Heights. Handoff goes straight up the middle to Holland, and he bounces off of his offensive guard and is pushed backwards for a loss of one. Wichita Heights just forced a punt by Garden City, but the Buffaloes still lead it 19 to 12. Clock winding to a minute 15 to go in the third quarter. Cal Friedman here covering all the action in this first game for KWKR 99.9 The Rock. Second down and 11 here for the Falcons, trailing it by seven. Bunch set up here in the triple option offense. The handoff goes along the near sideline. Meyer trying to find room. A couple Buffaloes trying to swarm him and he's pushed out of bounds by Zunts. That was Avon and Boulay, excuse me, who took the carry. He had a big carry in the first possession for Wichita Heights, but that carry goes for two yards and sets up third down and nine. Emilio Zunt, who recovered a big time fumble on the last possession by Wichita Heights, forced by Evan Finch. Pushes him out of bounds. They will actually move it back. They initially had the down marker at the 37 yard line. They move it back to the 36. So the initial line of scrimmage, third down and 10 for Wichita Heights. Clock is stopped with 56 seconds to go in the half after we pushed out of bounds. The Falcons need to get it to the 46 to keep this drive moving. One wide receiver out to the far sideline. Man in motion. They fake it. Bootleg to the right side. Johnson looking to throw. Has a man wide open. Complete for the first down. Zipper him to the 50. Inside Garden City territory. Still moving the legs is Botany. And he moves his way to the 36-yard line. They go bootleg. They move Johnson out to the far sideline. They ran a crosser. Botany wide open for his second catch of the game. And the Falcons move it to about the 40, excuse me, the 38-yard line. Three completions for Johnson in this half. All have been very positive. That's the second for Bodney after he had a five-yard catch on the first drive. First down and 10. Sweeper out to the nearest side. And Boule wrapped up in the backfield by Finch and Polkerhorn. He's taken down in the backfield. Plankenhorn finishes off the tackle for a loss. Big time play for the sophomore. And an injured Buffalo down on the field right now on the tackle for loss. They'll say loss of five. We'll get a number in the moment as it looks like he's going to be able to pump up himself. That's Braden Dibble, the free safety, who's going to be able to jog off the field on his own power. He's motioning towards his right leg. He's got a little bit of a hobble. He looks to be fine. Might just be a little stinger there for the free safety, the junior. He makes his way off the field. He's been very impressive tonight. So after the big time completion to Bondi, they go all the way back to the 42-yard line. Second down and 15 will be on the other side of this break. We've played 36 minutes. We've got 12 more to go. The end of the third here for Mike Stadium. Puts your fours up. The Buffaloes lead it 19 to 12 here on KWKR 99.9 The Rock. There's some reason we're all here. To create an amazing experience for each life we touch. If we look closely, we might just see there's something about you amazing people. These amazing drinks served this amazingly fast. There's just something about Scooter's Coffee. Twelve minutes to play here from Heights Stadium in Wichita. Garden City still in front, but it's down to a seven-point game as the Buffaloes lead at 19-12. to 
Cal Friedman here for KWKR 99.9 The Rock. Before we start off this fourth quarter, let's bring you around the rest of Kansas' high school. Here at the Anatown scoreboard brought to you by Crazy House, the boot king of Kansas. Lakin leads Stanton County 48 to nothing. That one winding down in the third quarter. Hugotson dominating Southwestern Heights with a 49 to nothing lead. Scott City leading 28 to 7 over Cimarron. You can catch that action on KSKL. Colby leads Ulysses 26 to 2. Looking to close out their first win of the season and across town over in Wichita. The Dodge City Red Demons have taken the lead on a Cade Barrett three yard run. They failed the two point conversion, so it's 13 to eight in favor of the Red Demons over the Pioneers of Wichita West. Most important score is the one going on right here, Garden City. After a tackle for loss, line up here. Start the fourth quarter, it's a second and 15 for Wichita Heights. Moving the ball currently down at the 43-yard line of Garden City. Need to get the ball to the 28-yard line to keep the sticks moving. So I think they've done so well here in this second half. It has been a total role reversal. As now, it looks like Wichita Heights is going to go to a single back set. Three wide receivers out here for the Falcons. Instead, it's a keeper on a read option for Johnson. Broke out of one tack with a really nice juke move and gets to the 35-yard line. He shows the elusiveness that he had playing wide receiver last season. He had a touchdown in this game in a 36-26 win for Garden City. Picks up seven there, is going to set up third down and medium. They're in no man's land right now, out of field goal range, but they are moving the ball. Let's see what Dominic Dinkle wants to draw up. If they want to try and get a couple yards set up fourth and short, or if they want to expand the pass game, which is what they used on their last third down. Two wide receivers out to each side. It's the flex bone ship. For turbo option formation, I should say. Johnson fakes the pitch, hands it off to the left side, going nowhere, taken down in the backfield. Carson Krause all over that play. Big time tackle for loss, and that might force a punt. They fake the pitch to the near side, they hand off to the far side to Meyer. Garden City was not fooled, and Krause, who had a sack earlier in this game, makes a play as big as you could have wanted for Garden City, I'll say. Not quite a sack, but a huge tackle for loss. But here in no man's land, it looks like the Falcons do not want to play field position. They're going to send the offense out. Interesting call here by Dominic Dingle. It's a fourth down and very long. They spot it right now at the 41. They need the 28 to keep this drive moving. Johnson sends a man in motion, and before they can get the snap off, it's going to be a false start on the left tackle. And now we'll see if that changes the uh, decision. As the false start is confirmed by the head referee today, that's against Corey Spivy, the left tackle. So it's going to be fourth and... So that's going to down them at the 44-yard line, and I think that's going to cause Wichita Heights to now play field position. The punt unit has assembled at midfield. Right. I believe they're going to punt. And the Falcons do indeed send their punt team out, so Garden City holds after they punted. And this game slowly dragging out a little bit, but the tension is there. Say the least between these two teams. A game that has not been separated by too much in this second half. Game of two halves. Garden City dominated in the first half ever since that touchdown run in the second half. We've gone back and forth with turnovers and punts. This one's booted away towards Ethan Allen. A line drive straight to him. He muffs the punt. It's loose to the 10 yard line. Picked up and taken into the end zone. Touchdown, Wichita Heights. <laughs> Kale Millicent. There to down it on the mistake by Allen. He called for a fair catch. He bounced in and out of his hands. A moment he won't want to watch back. And now the Falcons, with an extra point, could tie this game. Second time that Millicent has been Johnny on the spot. Recovered a fumble for a touchdown earlier. Now he recovers a month, muff punt, excuse me, for six. Man, oh man. So now what do you do if you're Wichita Heights? You've had two PATs fail tonight. The call on the field is confirmed. As it stands, it's a one-point game. Will the Falcons go for two? It looks like they're going to. So Wichita Heights, after failing two extra points in this game, is now going to go for two and try and take the lead here with 10.04 to go in the fourth. Looks like Johnson out there with the running back, Holland. One wide receiver post out to either side. Play clock has not yet started as Wichita Heights going to take advantage of that, and they're going to rush Meyer in. Here we go. 10.04 to go in the fourth quarter. Clock will not move. Garden City has a one-point lead. 
but Wichita Heights could take their first lead of the game right here on a two-point conversion. The officials have met around the five-yard line. See, it was a muff punt. Yeah, no, that, okay, so they're confirming it now. That should not be a touchdown because it was a fair catch. It should be downed. It should be down to the five-yard line because that's where they recovered the punt. They took it into the end zone. The call in the field was touchdown. It should be a recovered muff punt and should it set up first and goal for Wichita Heights. I was actually confused when they called it on the field because it was a muff punt. So it's gonna be still 19 to 12 Garden City, but now Heights is gonna have it with first and goal to go. Regardless, still a big time mistake by Garden City. The call on the field, like I said, was touchdown, but because it was a muffed punt by rule, wherever Wichita Heights recovered it is where it's down. They're not allowed to advance the ball. Again, that's what I was thinking, but I was just going with the call on the field. Regardless, big time turnover. And Wichita Heights is set up in the Lewis Automotive Red Zone. Lewis Automotive, your home of drivers in southwest Kansas. First down and 10 at the 12-yard line of Garden City. Johnson the snap. Handoff up the middle to Holland, who's moving the pile inside the 10 and down at the 7-yard line, I want to say. Holland, who's been the leading carrier in this game for Wichita Heights, now north of about 25 yards in this contest. Second time in the red zone for Heights in this game. They did score on their last drive to the red zone on a touchdown run along the near sideline by Lucas Meyer. 9.36 to go in the fourth quarter. Garden City protecting a 19 to 12 lead. Second down and four for Wichita Heights at the Garden City six. Trying to potentially tie or take the lead in this game. Three wide receivers to the near side. Keeper for Johnson up the middle at the goal line and in. Touchdown, Tavian Johnson. The Falcons take advantage off the muff punt by Allen. It's a one point game right now. And now decision time for Dominic Dinkle. As it stands, it's now 18 to 19 with Garden City in front with 921 here to go in the fourth quarter. They had lined up like they were going to go for two before, before the call was overturned because it was a muff punt. Johnson is charted off to the try line. He's gonna get the call from Dingle. It looks like they're gonna go for two. Here we go. Falcons trying to take their first lead of the game. Johnson's rushing touchdown has them within one. They need two yards and they'll have the lead here with less than nine and a half to go in the fourth quarter. They line up in a bunch of formation. One wide receiver out to each side. It's that flex bone triple option set. One side back out to each side. The running back is Holland. Johnson sent the right back in motion. Hand off up the middle. Holland off a tackle and in. And Wichita Heights has taken their first lead of the game with 9.21 to go. A six yard touchdown run by quarterback Taven Johnson, a two point conversion by Jamison Holland, and the Falcons lead 20 to 19 with 9.21 to go in the fourth. Down to the wire we go at Heights Stadium. The Falcons in front by one here on KWKR 99.9 The Rock. When was the last time your family had their best day ever? Come to Garden City, Kansas, where you can slide, splash, and play this summer. The all-new Garden Rapids at the Big Pool. Thrills and chills for the whole family. Parrot Cove Indoor Water Park, where there's something for everyone. No matter what the weather, we have you covered. Garden City, Kansas has the coolest spots under the sun. Make a splash. And the mission of the Casnetti Group is to make your insurance experience convenient, simple, and affordable. They would meet a welcoming staff and people that really care about them and want to you know, help them with their needs, whatever that might be. What is most satisfying about what I do is our clients. Bottom line, I love just watching our clients grow and get to be part of their life. They have their first lead all night with 9.21 to go in the fourth quarter with the Falcons protecting a 20-19 lead over Garden City. Cal Freeman here for KWKR 99.9 .9 FM. Taven Johnson 
with the touchdown run of six yards and the go-ahead two-point conversion by Jamison Hollins. Has put Wichita Heights in front for the first time this season. Trying to erase what was a 36 to 26 loss last season. Wichita Heights will punt it off towards the right end zone here on this opening kickoff. Garden City's got to find some answers on offense now trailing by one. Tango Cloud sends it away towards the right end zone. Allen dropping back, receives it at the 12, trying to return it down the far sideline. Cuts in the middle of the field and gets to about the 28 yard line. It was Ethan Allen's punt, now a flag comes in late. This one could be coming back. Logan Avalon on the far side, getting into some extracurriculars with Javen Williams. It was Ethan Allen who scored the what would have been game-winning touchdown before that punt muff to put Garden City ahead 19-6 to in the second quarter, who muffed the punt. It was initially called a touchdown, as now we get the call. And he moves it back to the 29-yard line, I believe. This is a game that Garden City basically led for the entire game last season. Last year, it was Wichita Heights who shot themselves in the foot. A couple of defensive touchdowns by Garden City's defense. One early on by Ryan Heyman, one on Jesus Rodriguez's fumble recovery for touchdown. Now a couple of Garden City turnovers have put them behind. Now they operate first down and 10 at their own 29. Gomez takes the snap, pitch out to the near side via Lobos. Cuts up the field at the 29, and he's taken down at the 30-yard line. Nate Campbell read that play like a book. The senior linebacker makes the tackle after a one-yard gain for Villalobos. Allen, who scored that game-winning touchdown, muffed the punt at the six-yard line. It was recovered and taken into the end zone by Heights. Now, because he called fair catch, you cannot advance the punt. So it was fielded by Millicent at the six. It was down there at the 12-yard line, actually, I should say. And then from the six, Taven Johnson takes a read option in for six but the Falcons in front. Second down and nine for Garden City at their own 30. Gomez takes the snap under pressure immediately and wrapped up for a sack. Campbell again. He timed the snap absolutely perfectly, shooting through the hole between the right guard and the right center. A big tackle for loss is gonna force a third down and very long. All of a sudden, a Garden City offense that moved the ball for fun in the first half has been pushed around by Wichita Heights. Dominic Dinkle has pushed all the right buttons here in the second half. Trying to start his sixth season as Heights head coach with a win. And what a win it could be for this Heights team. What a shift it could be from last season's start. We'll get back into that in a moment. Under eight minutes to go. Third down and 13 for Garden City. Bunch set here for the Buffaloes. Gomez the snap. Handoff goes straight up the middle to Ruiz. Gets off the first tackle. Gets around the line of scrimmage. Originally taken down. Fourth down coming up. Javen Martin, one of 27 seniors for this Falcons team, will force a three and out here for Garden City as they sent the punt team out. Last season, Wichita Heights lost this game 36 to 26 on the box score, but what really affected this Falcons team was that storm at halftime, delayed the game over two hours. Wichita Heights did not get back to their campus until 5.55 in the morning on Saturday after they left campus at 2.45. Now playing at their home turf, an opportunity to defend it and start this season with a win. Rodriguez sends this punt away towards the left end zone. Wichita Heights is going to let this one bounce at the 31, takes the Heights bounce to the 34-yard line, and that's where the Falcons will take over. We'll take a 30-second break, 6.58 to go in the game. Heights 20, Garden City 19 here on KWKR 99 The Rock. Integrity. Community focus. Accountability. Respect. And an entrepreneurial spirit. These are the qualities that make up a good bank. These are also the qualities that define Equity Bank. Equity Bank. We never forget it's your money. First and 10 for Wichita Heights. They pitch to the near side for Gray off of one tackle and taken down after a gain of one. That was Dennis Carter, excuse me, on a one yard carry on a toss to the right side. Second down and nine coming up. Clock winding in favor of Wichita Heights, 20 to 19. Under 6.45 to go in the fourth quarter. 
Garden City's conceded 14 straight points. They haven't been able to move the ball here in this second half. The Falcons, who moved the ball down the field, were forced to punt, then recovered a muff punt by Ethan Allen and took the advantage of that, driving 12 yards into the end zone on a Taven Johnson. Touchdown run for the quarterback and a two-point conversion by running back Jamison Holland. Nine seconds to snap here, 6.17 to go in the fourth. Heights by one as whistles blow and flags are in the backfield. I'm not sure what this one will be, actually, because... Heights didn't move. They're pointing towards the play clock. Here comes the call. No flag on the play. It looks like the play clock was moving before they were set. So disregard that flag. Second down and nine. Flex bone set. Snap to Johnson. Hand off to the near sideline. This time it is Gray. Cutting up field and wrapped up by Emilio Zunt at the 41-yard line. They'll say gain of five on that carry by Gray, who didn't have that many touches in the first half. The sophomore has become much more involved. He's had a couple big chunk plays, one through the air on a 20-plus yard catch, and it will set up from a second and nine to a third down and three. Garden City's got to get heights off the field here. It's down at the 41. The Falcons need to get to the 44 to keep this drive alive. Triple option set. One wide receiver out to each side. To the far side, Bondi. To the near side, Gilkey. Man in motion is number 11, Avon Mbola. He moves out to the slot on the left side. One second to snap. They get it off. The handoff goes up the middle to Holland. He was wrestled down. He moved forward, and I think he's short. He got two yards on the play. It sets up fourth and one. What will the Falcons do now? I'd assume they go for it. They've been moving the ball very well in this half. Oh, and now they're going to change it and say first down. They initially had it down fourth and one, and the head referee is telling them to move the six forward. That is a first down. They needed three, and they got just about three. So the clock will keep winding. Under five minutes to go in this game. Heights 20, Garden City 19. First and 10 at the 44. They're trying to get it set really quickly. They got one second to snap, and Tingle's forced to call a timeout. So they call timeout here with 4.33 to go in the fourth quarter. Wichita Heights with a big time third down conversion. With 4.33 to go, Wichita Heights 20, Garden City 19. We'll be right back on KWKR 99 The Rock. When your car's been in a collision, getting it repaired properly is critical for your family's safety and your peace of mind. Skeeter's Body Shop is the only body shop in Southwest Kansas to complete the rigorous training requirements to be Gold Class certified. Certified by Ford, GM, Dodge, Jeep, Honda, Nissan, Hyundai, and many others, and even certified for your new aluminum vehicle, so our repairs won't void your factory warranty. Choose to have your vehicle repaired by professionals. Choose Skeeter's Body Shop in Garden City. Wichita Heights down at one timeout here with 4.33 to go in the game. The Falcons lead it 20 to 19. They'll set up with a first down and 10 at their own 44 yard line. Cal Freeman here for KWKR 99.9 FM. Thank you so much for joining us here. Game one of eight here in the 2023 regular season for the Buffs. Coming off a six and two regular season, but trying to avoid dropping to 0 and one after that first down conversion. They looked short initially. It was initially called a fourth and one. They changed the rule and they gave Heights the first down. And they have it down at the 44 at the moment. Head judge is talking over with Taven Johnson, the quarterback who has the go-ahead touchdown for this Heights team, Tavian Johnson, of six yards on the ground on a read option. He faked the give up the middle, ran to the right, and scored. First down and 10, play resumes. Handoff goes up the middle to Holland, breaks out of one tackle, gets to midfield, and he's taken down at midfield, maybe at the 49-yard line. Just a straight handoff up the middle. Holland did a great job to read it and bounce to the outside. Tackled on the edge by Plankenhorn. So second down coming up at midfield here. 
What a total role reversal it has been for Garden City, who dominated the first half. Heights only gained one first down in that entire first half. They came out of the second half and gained four immediately, moving all the way down to the red zone. They've scored two red zone touchdowns in this half, and most recently a two-point conversion by the aforementioned Holland gives them a 20-19 lead. Under four minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Second down at midfield. They need to get to the 46 for a first down. Sweeper out to Gray, and he loses his footing and taken down in the backfield. Plankenhorn pursued him. It was Braden Dibble who made the tackle. Loss of one and third down coming up, and immediately looks like Garden City's called timeout. And there is the first timeout taken in this half by the Buffaloes. So 3.40 to go. Big third down coming up for Wichita Heights when we come back. Garden City trailing it to 2019 here on KWKR 99 The Rock. Biggest play of the game coming up here at Heights Stadium after a tackle for loss by safety Braden Dibble. Wichita Heights will face a third down and six at their own 48-yard line, controlling a one-point lead here with 3.44 to go in the fourth quarter. Cal Freeman here for KWKR 99.9 FM. Wichita Heights has completely turned this game on his head after a dominant first half by the Buffaloes, which saw them lead by as much as 13. 14 unanswered points by the Falcons on a pair of rushing touchdowns in the red zone by Lucas Meyer and Tavian Johnson. Johnson leads the offense back on the field. Here is third down and six after Garden City burned a timeout after the tackle for loss. Heights needs to get it to the Garden City 47. They line up with their own 48. One wide receiver to the far side in the triple option formation. Johnson, the snap, handoff straight up the middle to Holland, and he is wrestled down at the line of scrimmage. Taken down by Sebastian Lopez. It'll be fourth down coming up and a huge decision coming up as Garden City burns their second timeout. We'll keep it here on KWKR 99, The Rock. They will give them a one yard gain, so they put it at the 49. The clock stops with 3.37 to go. Now, if you're Wichita Heights, you could potentially punt and put the game in the hands of the Buffaloes, only trailing by one to potentially get a game-winning field goal or a game-winning touchdown drive. You can go for the fourth down and try and really ice this game out with the Buffaloes only down to one timeout. But if you fail, you set up the Buffaloes at the 48-yard line. Now, if I'm Dominic Dingle, your defense has been absolutely dominant in this second half. Your offense has moved the ball. I would put faith in the defense to try and seal this game out, even if it's a one-point game. The offense is huddled up right now at the 45-yard line, and it looks like Wichita Heights will go. Man, oh man, this is what we live for. Friday Night Lights, week one of the season, one-point game, final moments of the fourth quarter, and the Falcons are gonna try and ice this game. They will line up at their own 49. They needed to get it to the Garden City 46-yard line to keep this drive going. Fourth down coming up. Triple option formation. One wide receiver to the far side, one to the near for the Falcons. It's Gilkey on the near side and Bodney to the far. And now a timeout, excuse me, not a timeout taken. They're going to change it and they're going to punt. So they completely flipped it. They had the offense on the field. Now the entire offense is coming off the field. Play clock's winding to 10 seconds. They'll punt it away to Ethan Allen, who muffed the last punt. Punters back at the 35. Allen's returning at the 19. Kick is boomed away. Allen moving out to get it. Now he'll let this one drop. It takes a Wichita Heights bounce, rolls out of bounds at the 23-yard line. So with 3.27 to go, Garden City will have to move it 77 yards, give or take, down the field to try and either score a touchdown or kick a field goal to win this game. A Garden City offense that dominated on the ball in the first half. They scored three rushing touchdowns, one on their opening drive of the season by Ruiz. Another by Ruiz in the second quarter and a 50-yard run by Ethan Allen. Since then, all Wichita Heights. But here in football, last five minutes is really all that matters. Here we go. 3.27 to go. Garden City have it at their own 23, first and 10. Gomez takes the snap. It's a read option. Pitch out to the near sideline. Here's Villalobos getting the pitch, and he's taken down 
Maybe a gain of one on the play, pursued on the play by Tyndall Cloud. They'll say gain of two. Reveal Lobos, who's had a couple of big chunk plays. He's been very explosive here in his debut in his junior season. Had over 100 yards last season. They'll move it back a yard. So second down and nine here coming up at the 24-yard line. Clock winding to under three minutes to go. Gomez, the snap. He pitches out to the near side for Allen. He's got space at the 30-yard line. Has the first down and is taken down at the 37. Allen's a little slow to get up, but they'll say a nine-yard gain on a first down for the Buffaloes. Clock stops at 2.50 as the sticks move up. They'll say 35-yard line, excuse me. Ethan Allen, who's 50-yard touchdown, put the Buffaloes ahead by 13 as Muff Punt helped the Falcons take their first lead of the night. Two wide receivers on the near side for Gomez, who takes the snap, keeps it himself on the read option and moves forward for a yard or two. They'll say two-yard gain, clock winding down to 2.25 to go in the game. If you're just joining us, Garden City trails at 19 to 20. They've got the ball and they've got it at their own 37 yard line. A game where they've yet to complete a pass in this game. Can the Buffaloes perform some two minute magic and give themselves a win here in Wichita? Second down and eight. Gomez will throw. Throws to the near side. Nobody's home incomplete. That one lands at the 42 yard line. The clock stops with 2.02 to go. Third down and eight coming up. Looked like they were trying to set up a wheel route to the near sideline. It was either underthrown or thrown away by Gomez, who didn't get it out of bounds. But regardless, the clock stops, which does help Garden City here with 2.02 to go. Third down and eight. You're in four down situation for the rest of the way, with the Buffaloes trailing at 20 to 19. After leading for the vast majority of this game, trying to come from behind and win it here at Height Stadium. Triple option formation, one wide receiver out to each side. Steeth at the near side, Zunt at the far. Third and eight, Allen in motion. Play action, Gomez throwing to the near side. It is caught by Zunt on the far sideline, excuse me. First down, Jordan City. Emilio Zunt's fired up on the far sideline. He ran an out route, got wide open at the sticks. Picks up the first down, they needed eight and they got nine. And most importantly, the clock stops at 1.56 to go in the contest. They will spot it at the 45 yard line. First and 10, Garden City, as Ethan Gomez gets the call from Brian Hill on the far sideline, now trots back into the huddle. First and 10, both wide receivers to the near side are Sneath and Zunt here, triple option formation. Villalobos in motion. They fake the pitch and they hand it to Allen and it's blown up in the backfield. Wichita Heights all over that one. Javen Martin, the defensive end with a tackle for loss, loss of two. Clock still winding, Garden City's gotta hurry this one up. Winding to a minute 40. Hill quickly gets the call in to Gomez, who trots back in. Now a minute 36 to go in the game. Buffaloes trail it by one here, second down and 13 coming up at the 43 yard line. One wide receiver out to each side here for Gomez. Takes the snap under center, drops three steps to throw. Throwing one deep down the middle of the field, overthrown, incomplete, no flags, third down coming up. Excuse me, there is a flag back to the line of scrimmage. Flag, uh, Miles, please. I said no flags because there was no flags downfield, there was no PI and it's holding against Garden City. And they will enforce the penalty rather than make it third down and long. It's gonna be second down and even longer. The clock does stop with 1.20 to go, but this one's gonna go all the way back. They will down it at the 33 yard line. Garden City's gotta take it all the way to the 44 of heights to keep this one moving. Second down and 22 with a minute and 20 seconds to go. Clock stopped at the moment. One wide receiver out to each side for Gomez. Falcons showing pressure. Gomez to throw. Free rush around the edge. Gomez steps up out of it. It's tipped to the line and incomplete. Miles Walker came free around the edge. The other edge rusher batted the pass down. And it's going to be third down and 22. Good job by Gomez to avoid the sack. A sack would have absolutely killed Garden City there. Walker got a free edge along the left side as McMillan missed his block. 1.14 to go, third down and 22. If you're Garden City, you at least have to pick up some yards to make it fourth down and somewhat manageable. Third and 22. Triple option formation, one wide receiver each side. 
Read option. They pitch it on the near side for Zutt. There's free space for him. Cuts up the midfield at the 40. Now past the 50. Zutt's got space. Near side at the 40. And tackled by one of the safeties at the 33-yard line. What a play by Garden City. They pick up third and 22 and some from Zutt. The clock stops with 1.03 to go. They have it down at the 34-yard line. Huge chunk play for Garnon. In a second half where they have struggled to move the ball at all, they get a huge play from one of their senior captains. Clock will resume on the snap. 1.03 to go, first and 10 for Garden City at the 34. Read option, pitch out to the near side via Lobos, and he's swarmed by the Falcons back at the 36. Kale Millison swarmed from behind, a couple other Falcons in front. Michael Smith on the tackle, and Garden City's got to use their last timeout with 56 seconds to go. What a finish we have here. A huge play by Emilio Zunt on third and 22 to move Garden City all the way up to the 34. He's picked up a couple of third downs on this drive. One through the air, that time on the ground. We'll keep it here. It's going to be a loss of two on the play, so it'll be second down and 12 coming up. 56 seconds to go. Thank you so much for joining in, or if you've joined in all night long, it has been an awesome game to call here week number one of the 2023 high school football season. Garden City trails at 20 to 19. 14 unanswered second half points by the Falcons has put them in front. But the Buffaloes, after being stuffed for the entire second half, a big time play by Emilio Zunt moves them inside the 34. They'll have it at the 36 now. Now the question, if you're Garden City, has to be how good is Eddie Rodriguez's leg. It's only a one-point game. You can try for a game-winning field goal. Now, you have had a couple of extra points go awry in this game. They went one for two. They now have no timeouts. That is another big thing. So if they do want to stop the clock, they're going to have to move to the, to the line and spike it or get a first down. Second down coming up for Garden City at the Wichita Heights 36. They need to get it to the 25. Man in motion is Allen. And immediately flags fly. This one should be coming back. And it is a false start. It's been a sloppy second half for the Buffaloes. They didn't commit any flags in the first half, which is exactly what you would have wanted in a week one. Second half, things have unraveled. It's false start on the offense. Not sure which player it was on the offensive line. But it is going to move the ball back to second. And I want to say 17. Yep. So that one moves it all the way back to the 40. Hold on a second. They've got it wrong. They initially were moving it back 10 yards. So now it's at the 41. Second and very long. 56 seconds to go in this game. Garden City trails it by one. The moon has also risen over the campus here at Wichita Heights. It's a beautiful moon. I know we got to be focused on the football, but it is just a beautiful night. It is Friday night lights. We got here around 4 o'clock. It was 100 degrees. Temperatures have dropped into the 70s. It's turned into a beautiful night here in Wichita. The Falcons faithful trying to cheer their team on to win the Buffaloes fans at the far sideline, trying to see their team come from behind and win a magical week one game. They line up at the Wichita Heights 41. Clock is winding. Allen in motion. Gomez to throw. Has time. Press steps up. And he's going to be sacked. He's going to be sacked at the 47. Garden City's got to go. Clock's winding at 38 seconds. It's going to be third down and very long. Clock still winding at 33. This is probably going to be your ball game. Under 30 seconds to go. Garden City lines up quickly. 27 seconds to go. Now 26, 25. Third down and very long. Gomez, the snap, triple option. Pitch down to the right side, Allen's got space at the 40. Spins loose, spins loose of another man, taken down at the 36. Clock winding at 15. Are the, Bron are the Buffaloes gonna get another playoff? 12, 11, 10, fourth down, 11 coming up. Nine, eight, seven, six. Can they get the snap off? Down to five seconds. Gomez lines up, gets the snap off with two. Here's your ball game. Gomez flings it towards the end zone. Intercepted, there's your ball game. Wichita Heights running it back. They will win this one in week one. It's Avante Scales who runs it back to the 43 and wins the game for the Falcons. They mobbed the field. What a turnaround for Wichita Heights. From 19-6 down to open up the second half, they overturn a 13-point lead and win this one 20-19 here from Heights Stadium. 
Garden City did everything right after the run by Allen. They all lined up as quickly as they could. They lobbed it down the field. Avante Scales, the free safety, with the interception in the winner for the Falcons. We're going to take a moment, step aside for the Robinson Furniture Post Game Show. Garden City falls 20 to 19 here in Week One on KWKR 99, The Rock. I'm going to ask Colin for two minutes. Actually, three minutes. When was the last time your family had their best day ever? Come to Garden right, City, Kansas, where you can slide, splash, and play this summer. The all-new Garden Rapids at the Big Pool. Thrills and chills for the whole family. Parrot Cove Indoor Water Park, where there's something for everyone. No matter what the weather, we have you covered. Garden City, Kansas has the coolest spots under the sun. Make a splash. And the mission of the Casnetti Group is to make your insurance experience convenient, simple, and affordable. They would meet a welcoming staff and people that really care about them and want to you know, help them with their needs, whatever that might be. What is most satisfying about what I do is our clients. Bottom line, I love just watching our clients grow and get to be part of their life. Integrity, community focus, accountability, respect, and an entrepreneurial spirit. These are the qualities that make up a good bank. These are also the qualities that define Equity Bank. Equity Bank, we never forget it's your money. When your car's been in a collision, getting it repaired properly is critical for your family's safety and your peace of mind. Skeeter's Body Shop is the only body shop in Southwest Kansas to complete the rigorous training requirements to be Gold Class certified. Certified by Ford, GM, Dodge, Jeep, Honda, Nissan, Hyundai, and many others, and even certified for your new aluminum vehicle, so our repairs won't void your factory warranty. Choose to have your vehicle repaired by professionals. Choose Skeeter's Body Shop in Garden City. There's some. This one comes to an end for Garden City. Welcome back to Heights Stadium here in Wichita, a game that got away from them. Garden City, who led 19 to six in the first half, loses 20 to 19 here at Heights Stadium. With that, we welcome you into the Robinson Post Game Show. Robinson Furniture has quality furniture suited to the way you live as long as their long history, excuse me, of helping people select furniture is well established and will help you make the right choice. Located at 11th and Fulton in Garden City. That's Robinson Furniture. Cal Friedman here for KWK and R99, The Rock, a game that Garden City started so strong and on a sour note. Garden City opened the scoring in their first drive of the season. It was a great drive, which they got the ball at the 35. They marched at 65 yards on nine plays. They took the lead on a Mario Ruiz six-yard touchdown run to lead six to nothing. Their ensuing extra points was a high snap that Emilio Zunt couldn't quite get down in time. He actually threw it to Evan Finch for a completed pass, but it didn't go for much. They didn't get the two-point conversion. Now, you're wondering probably why I say that, why I'm bringing up a failed extra point. The game finished 20 19 it's a game of inches. That is how brutal high school football can be. A play all the way back in the first quarter before Wichita Heights even got the ball completely changed the outcome of this game. The start of the second quarter after the Buffaloes completely dominated in the first went awry. A failed triple option, I should say, by Ethan Gomez. He tried to pitch it back to Ethan Allen, was batted and taken away by Kale Millison, who returned 48 yards for a touchdown on a fumble recovery. 
Wichita Heights would fail their extra point on a low kick to tie the game at six. Garden City would dominate the first half from that point on. They marched right down the field and scored again. A seven-yard touchdown by running back Mario Ruiz with the extra point converted by Rodriguez to make it 13-6. to six. And Garden City would execute their biggest play of the game in the first half, a 50-yard run along the near side by Ethan Allen for a 50-yard touchdown run, the first ever of his high school career to give the Buffaloes a 19-6 lead. It seemed like all Garden City. Wichita Heights only gained one first down in the entire first half. The Buffaloes played a clean game, didn't turn the ball over, didn't commit any penalties, but it was all Wichita Heights in the second half. A couple big chunk plays in the first drive of their second half. A 22-yard run by Jamison Holland set up a Lucas Meyer one-yard rushing touchdown to bring the game within seven after the Falcons failed an extra point. In the fourth quarter, the game went away on a muffed punt by Ethan Allen. Garden City was going to get the ball back with about 10 minutes to go in the game. Allen called for fair catch. It bounced in and out of his hands. It was recovered by, again, Millicent, who ran it into the end zone for a touchdown. Now, because it was a muff punt, you cannot advance the ball past where it was caught. So at the 12-yard line, which the Heights picked it up, they ran it into the end zone. It was called back initially on the field. It was called a touchdown. But regardless, a couple plays later, read option for the quarterback, Tavion Johnson, who took it six yards for the score. And Wichita Heights, after a couple failed extra points, decided to go for two. It was the right decision as Jamison Holland would pound it into the end zone to give the Falcons the lead. Garden City had a couple chances in that second half to gain momentum again. They did force a fumble by Evan Finch, who punched it out and was recovered by Emilio Zon, who made plenty of big plays for the Buffaloes in that last drive. He had a big-time catch on a completion by Ethan Gomez. He then had, on a third and 22, an end around which went north of 30 or 40 yards, I want to say. I don't have the official numbering, but he took it all the way to the 36, and with 56 seconds to go, it looked like Garden City had an opportunity to potentially drive down the field, get the game-winning field goal. A couple backwards plays. Great third and very long. They wind up running a play, getting it to about the 35, I want to say, on a 11-yard carry by Ethan Allen. But ultimately, at the time winding, Garden City had to roll the dice, put everything on the line. They threw it down the field on a Hail Mary. It was too high for the intended receiver. I believe it was something. It was picked off by Avante Scales, one of the captains of this Wichita Heights defense, who returned it back, and the Heights sideline exploded. You got to give it to him. From 13 points down, I mean, they were out of this game in the first half. They only gained one first down, and they found a way. you got to give full credit to former Garden City assistant and Wichita Heights six-year head coach Dominic Dinkle. He seemed to push all the right buttons in the second half because after being absolutely dominated in the first half, Wichita Heights flipped the script, and they turned the game on its head and gave themselves a big-time week one win. you got to give credit to them because – if you date all the way back to last season, this is a Wichita Heights team who left for game one in Garden City at, I want to say around 245 is what Dominic Dinkle told me. Due to that weather delay at halftime, it pushed it all the way back to an 11.30 second half kickoff, which meant obviously things had to delay its way longer. The game didn't wind up wrapping up until 2.30 in the morning. They didn't wind up getting back to this campus until around 6 o'clock in the morning. Now tonight, they get to leave this stadium at 9.36 at night as victors. I mean, that is exactly a role reversal. That is, that, is, that is exactly flipping the script. And that is what they did in the second half, and that is what they did from week one of last season to week one of this season. Wichita Heights advances to 1-0. Big time win for Wichita Heights. Give them full credit. Garden City drops to 0-1. and In a moment, we will have head coach... Brian Hill on the post-game show here, the Robinson Furniture post-game show, rolling on here from Heights Stadium. Before we get to that, let's give out our player of the game honors, brought to you by a, a Body Shop. a a Body Shop, the best shop in town, home of the car liner. Congratulations to Mario Ruiz, who takes home our first player of the game honors. He was lights out in the first half. He rushed for over 60 yards in the first quarter, gave the Buffaloes the lead twice in that game, one on an 11-yard run in the first, one on a 7-yard run in the second. Mario Ruiz, your player of the game for Garden City tonight. With that, we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back with head coach Brian Hill here. Garden City loses 20 to 19 here on KWKR 99 The Rock. Give me a minute. Hi there. We'll keep this short. Okay. Second one of these waters. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Can you give me one, two, please? Thank you. Back to Heights Stadium here on the Robinson Furniture Post Game Show. We are now joined by 14th year head coach of the Buffaloes, Brian Hill. Coach, tough loss for your team tonight, but the way your team started out at the start, you took a 19 to six lead in the first half. What did you make of the way your team started this game? Well, I really thought that we played pretty well. I mean, when we were doing the things that we needed to do, we were playing hard, didn't have many very minimal mistakes, and and uh, you know, I thought we played pretty well the first half. Your offense really did a great job to move the ball on the ground. You got a couple touchdowns by Mario Ruiz. You got a 50-yard touchdown by Ethan Allen. What stood out from your offensive line in the first? Well, they were coming off the football. Um, they were playing low. They were they were picking up the blitzes and those kind of things. And I think as the night went along, that that either fatigue or you know or miscommunication, whatever the case was, but we started to stand up. We were slow off the football, and and because of that, we let them you know run through and, and create a lot of negative plays for us. That last drive in the fourth quarter, Emilio Zunt had a couple of big plays. He had a catch to convert a first down. He had that huge play on the end of round. For him to step up and be one of the leaders of the team, what does that take for you know your team trailing at the point and for him to step up as a senior and make plays down the stretch? Well, that's you know it's what you're trying to do. I mean, you expect a guy that's played in some football games and, and things. We're trying to get the ball in his hands, try to be a go-to guy. Um, you know, he, he's a guy that's always stepped up to the challenge. It didn't matter if it was on offense or defense or whatever. And, you know, I, I always, you know, as many times as we can get the ball in his hands, the better off we are. So 0-1 now, you head home next week. You get two straight at home. You get Wichita North next week. You get Wichita West the week after. What's the key in practice to shake off this kind of loss and get ready for the Red Hawks on Friday? Well, we all have to look in the mirror, you know, a little bit. I, I, you know, what I was most disappointed really was that I didn't see a lot of mental toughness. You know, a lot of guys bailing out, you know, we had guys cramping and things. And, you know, what's really, you know, kind of crazy to me is that, you know, every kid got a 64 ounce, you know, water bottle at the beginning of practices. And, you know, they've been told to carry it around. And sometimes they do and sometimes they don't, you know. And that's kind of one of those things that, you know, I told them that, <clears throat> you know, a lot of times I see guys, you know, you know, you, we can do everything that we want, but the little things have to be done by the kids. And, and I'm not trying to put all this on the kids. I'm, I will take full responsibility for all of this. But, but you know, it, it's some of the little things that, that you know, we, we struggled yesterday in a Thursday practice that I did not think we were mentally uh, where we needed to be. And, and we had that discussion. And, you know, I thought we fixed it a little bit, you know, for the most part uh, in the first half. But Boy, it reared its ugly head, uh, you know, in the second half. And if we're gonna, if we're gonna be a better football team, you know, we we've got to we've got to work harder at practice. Um, we've got guys that, that have got to understand, you know, some of these guys that were doing this tonight, having some of their issues, were some guys are playing in their first varsity football game too. And I think that you know they don't understand the intensity, um, the length of a game, you know, what it takes to to put a four quarters together. And you know, hopefully now that they've learned, and and I mean, it's it's week one. Um, you know, we, we've got a lot to do. We've got to get back to work and, um, you know, no, nothing better than to do it in the home opener in front of our own crowd. Coach, thank you for your time. You bet. Thank Safe you. Travels. That was head coach Brian Hill. Garden City Falls 2019 here in week one. We'll be right back to give you the final line and preview next week. That'll all be right back here on the Robinson Post Game Show on KWKR 99 The Rock.
after a pair of rushing touchdowns by Mario Ruiz, who wins our AMA Body Cast Player of the Game. They get a 50-yard touchdown by Keaton Allen. It's the ice on the back. They get a pair of rushing touchdowns, one by Lucas Meyer, and the touchdown run by Sabian Johnson to bring it within a one-point game, and the game-winning two-point conversion by Jamie Holland. A couple turnovers forced in this game. Tonight, Garden City forced a fumble by safety Evan Finch, who's covered by Emilio Clark. Wichita Heights was able to force a couple of turnovers as well. Taylor Millicent ran a fumble back for a touchdown. He was also able to recover a muffed punt by Ethan Allen in the fourth quarter. And Avante Scales records the game-winning interception as time expired. Before we close out here, we're going to give you a couple scores around high school football here in the Allentown scoreboard. is brought to you by Crazy House. Crazy House, the boot king of Kansas City Finals. In the last one, Liberal beat Holcomb 23-17. Scott City with a big time win. They win 49 to 13 over Tron. Tight finish coming up in Junction City Hayes and Junction City tied at 14 in the fourth quarter. Great Bend with a win over McPherson. They win at 29 to 6. A couple other finals. Scott City beats Wichita West 38. Lakin beats Stanton County 56 to 14. And Colby beats Ulysses 32 to 8. That will do it for our coverage. Keep in mind, our coverage here on KWKR 99.9 The Rock will roll on. We start up with our brand new show called the Tundra Kansas Football Wrap-Up. Aaron Elam is standing by back at the Garden City studio. He will take us through not only this game, but a couple other finals. We'll hope to hear from some coaches, some players, and, of course, from you tuning in here on KWKR The Rock and across our network for the rest of the Kansas Broadcast Center. If you want to talk about a final, whether it's this game or another game, be sure to call into Aaron Elam as he says his Southwest Kansas football wrap-up coming up momentarily here on KWKR 99 The Rock. So that'll be it for one final time here from Heights Stadium. The final score, Wichita Heights 20, Garden City 19. Wichita Heights moves to 1-0 on the season. Garden City falls to 0-1. The Buffaloes will be back in action at home this next week on Friday at 7 o'clock against Wichita North. Assuming they beat 77-6 to last season, they will look for a big-time spot to try and go to 500 on the season. So that will do it. Some final thank yous to give out. I want to give a thank you to Jared Powers for traveling out here to Wichita and Heights Stadium and the Southwest Kansas Sports Network. They'll be streaming this game live on YouTube on the Garden City Buffaloes YouTube channel. They'll have this game and every game going on throughout the season. As a reminder here on KWKR 99, the Rock Garden City Blockbusters in action tomorrow. Number five, Garden City, and number nine, Iowa Central out in Fort Dodge at Dodger Stadium. The American Ninja pregame show gets underway at 1130. Kickoff between Trenton and the Blockbusters is set for 5 o'clock. Thank you so much to my producer and board operator, Colin Wellhoff, back in the studio, holding things down here in Garden City. One final time, Wichita Heights 20, Garden City 19. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight, whether it was just now for the fourth quarter or for the entire game. We appreciate you listening to us on KWKR 99 The Rock. You've been listening to the Special Edition of Garden City Buffalo Football here on KWKR.